And it's a good evening and welcome to Sandy Lane, Oxford for the opening fixture of the 2024 British Speedway season and our first live Oxford stream. Seven teams this season will contest the Sports Insure Premiership and tonight's clash will see two of the top flight newcomers as Oxford welcome the Birmingham Brummers in a fixture that see, sees two teams back in top flight action for the first time since 2007 and 2014 respectively. I'll apologise now because I am bound to at some point say the cheaters tonight. That is a given. Uh, but of course, we are welcoming the newly formed Oxford Spires to the tapes for the first time. Famous, famous club with a new team coming to tapes. They'll have the Cheetahs in the Championship. They'll have the Chargers in the National Development League. Um, and Oxford breaking new ground this year by having three teams in all three divisions. Unfortunately, the other Premiership fixture this evening was Leicester against Bellevue. That's fallen foul of the weather, as has uh, poor old Carl Howard's testimonial, Sheffield versus the rest of the world. So we're the only meeting on tonight. We have had rain, but the track guys have done amazing to get this fixture on this evening, um, and we're really looking forward to it. My name's Lee Kilby, and I'll be your lead commentator tonight. And joining me, I'm really delighted to say I've got the 2020 British champion, two-time Elite League Riders Championship, Rory Schlein. Rory, fantastic to see you. Yeah, a bit of a late call-up, but I'm here. Bit of a late um, nod. Yeah, yeah. Got a little bit damp walking in, but um, like you said, the racetrack's been really, really packed in, and um, surprisingly, it, it, I, I had a quick walk, and it, and it looks really good. So, um, you know, a little bit wet on top, but, uh, you know, the lads are all changed, and they're all warmed up and ready to go. And it's one of those things, isn't it, when you do start this season early in the season, you know, you can get this. We all know Speedway. You know what the weather's going to be like. But they've done amazing to get this on tonight, haven't they? Speedway in March, mate. Speedway in March, yeah. mate. <laughs> um, yeah, as long as I can remember. You know, you, it's always cold. Yeah, you're gambling with the weather. But, you know, Jamie's done a fantastic job. And uh, we've got the lineups, and we're going to go through them right now. Yeah, we'll start off with the Oxford Spires. Um, wonderful in introduction for, for Matt Sanofsky at number one. What a, what a rider to bring in, Rory. Uh, world class. Um, and uh, that's what they're going to be expecting from him. So uh, without the Grand Prix this year, he will definitely concentrate on British League racing. I think it will be, it'll be good for him. He will want to get sharp, and I think that's what British Speedway does for a lot of riders, and I think that's probably why he's come back. Yeah, it's terrific to see him back. He's been with Paul and Swin and Kingsland in the past, so it's, it's awesome to see him at uh, Oxford. Um, in at number two is, uh, is Charles Wright. Charles moving across from uh, a few years with Bellevue, 29 British champion, of course. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes here. He's had some successful meetings here in the past. Pairs winner uh, with Louis Kerr, who we'll go on to in a bit. Um, a good rider to have at number two. I think so. Uh, after his atrocious injuries last year, um, I think like a fresh a fresh start would be fantastic for him. So had a quick chat with him, you know, before the meeting, and uh, just said you, you're all straight. You have got the straight edge, and yeah. uh, you're ready to go. And um, yeah, he he seems uh, keen. Um, like a lot of them, not had a lot of track time, but um, yeah, I think handy at, uh, at number two, especially away from home, you'll be strong. Yeah, mo most definitely. Uh, moving on to three, Nikolai Clint, another rider we all know very well, uh, experienced rider. He will bring a lot uh, to, to that number three spot. Um, and it's good to see him, good to see him at the, the top level, and I think he'll do well here. This will suit him. This track, a um, bit of a Gators, Gators track, so definitely, definitely a track where uh, Oxford will get the best out of him. And, um, you know, a lot of experience as well. Uh, and in that engine part of the room, you know, uh, I think, you know, he will be a key member for the team. You know, as long as they, he can stay injury free, you know, he's had had some injuries over the year, but definitely a key rider, especially at home for, for Oxford. Yeah, but number four, man that needs no introduction, uh, Chris Bomber-Harris, 41 years of age now, Bomber, 41 years young. Um, again, multiple British champion. Um, he's been there, we've seen it, he's done it. He's, you know, he's got however many t-shirts. Yeah, I, I don't know what left uh, Bomber's got to prove. Um, you can stick him anywhere. You stick him in, uh, in a field and he'll he'll ride <laughs> it, you know, just ride it off. And, uh, um, you know, he's had some good meetings here. I uh, looked at some of his scores, you know, in the last few years and he can get around here pretty quick. And uh, the way the conditions could be tonight, it will definitely play into his favour. Could well suit him. Uh, in at five is, uh, is Rowan Tungay. Um, again, another rider who's been, a, he's been a, seems to have been around forever, Rowan. Um, but he's had a, a superb winter summer back home, 2020, 2024 Australian champion. Um, he'll be up for it and confident for this season. I was, I was surprised when, when I heard Oxford had signed him. Um, you know, he does really concentrate, you know, abroad. But, uh, you know, speaking to him before the meeting, he was saying, like, he's at that time, at that part in his career where the GPs are slowly, you know, the, the gap's getting smaller. Yeah. Um, and he thinks that racing in England, like I said, with Magic, it's going to keep him sharp for the uh, for the Grand Prix challenges. So I think that's fantastic. And, um, you know, this track will, will test him because it's, it's, a, it's a technical track. Um, but you can't not 
go past his form in Australia. Absolutely, um, yeah. Watching some of his races, I was speaking to my brother and my dad back in Australia, and he was fast. Yeah, and very, Oxford very fast. Would be delighted with his yeah. form. I think Canada. around Bellevue, around Sheffield, he's going to be dynamite. Yeah, wonderful. Be good to see. Um, into the reserve berth, and uh, a great rider to have at reserve, Louis Kerr. Um, again, Kings Lindbourne racer. Um, he's had success around this track. Um, he obviously rode here. Um, for, for, for the Cheetahs, he's won the pairs here with Charles Wright. He knows his way around this track, and again, he's he's, he's 33, but he always kind of comes across as quite a young rider still to me, in his attitude and the way he goes about it. Yeah, well, I've known Kerry for, when he joined Kingsland. Uh, I was there, the, you know, his first debut year, and you know, I've watched him mature and grow. And uh, lucky, you know, I'm racing with him at Berwick this year, so he's got the best of both worlds. So he's he's racing on a nice little track yeah, here, then right. racing at a big yeah. track at Berwick. So he's going to be sharp on all forms of, of types of tracks. But the big thing is Curry at reserve. It's For massive. me, that's the, the, and that's not knocking any other reserves, but he's by far the strongest reserve in the league. Yeah. And the key point is, if his average does go up, you've got Tungate, Harris, Clint and Wright who could drop down to reserve. And there's no other club that's got that. No, that's right. So They've got that's, that strength. That's yeah. why, for me, Oxford are dark horses for the league. Yeah, and that leaves that leaves our number seven, the Rising Star, which is uh, the exploded onto the scene last year. And I think he's he, he was breathtaking sometimes when you watch him, when you knew that he'd only been on the bike for uh, a short while. That's Ashton Bojan, 16 years of age. He's riding for the Cheetahs and the Spies, so he's going to get a lot of experience on this track. You'd like to think, with the makeup of the Oxford side, that the top five or six will win the meeting for them, and he will get the opportunity to progress, learn, and grow. I tell you what, Oxford have done brilliant how they've managed his career so far because he's come into a team where he's not going to be under any pressure at any time of the year uh, you know even if he starts well he will he will most likely stay at reserve yeah which I'm a big believer on I think British youth should be like Poland stay at reserve yeah that's right and um, did some track days with him last year in the British youth and the lad oozes talent and for someone so young his gating ability by far surpasses you know even even some experienced riders yeah so he is going to be another key rider for him for sure and if he did find his way into that top seven wow <laughs> that top six okay let's take a look at the birmingham brummies um and, a, and again a rider returning to british racing he hasn't been seen over here for a few years is vaclav milik um i'm excited to see vaclav and see what he produces and brings uh, and especially at number one for the brummies tonight he's an exciting rider um you know he's ridden in grand prix he's ridden in top top level poland sweden so there's quality there um obviously never been here at Oxford before so you know he's going to be going in a little bit cold but you know he has the quality uh it could be a slow burner he might need to find his way back into British League it is a different kettle of fish a um, little bit more you know bashy bargy you know in the first corners tracks are a bit more technical a little bit more inconsistent as well so but like these guys are coming back and they I think there's a reason for it yeah absolutely um he'll be joined uh, at number two is Tom Brennan um one of the Brits in the side Again, he came through that rising star and, and just exploded on the scene and was, was almost ahead of the game, um, but an exciting prospect and, and, again, a strong rider at number two. I think this is a good move for Tom. I think, you know, he, he did a, he had a good spell at Bellevue. He needed that, you know, coming from the likes of tracks like Eastbourne yeah. and that. So, you know, it helped him progress his career. Uh, but this is a kind of track that will suit him 100%. Uh, and if he's trapped tonight... It'll be good. Yeah. He, he will he will fire out them starts. Yeah, let's wait and see. Um, an exciting rider. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Victor Lampart in number three. The, the younger brother of David Lampart, who's, who's ridden over here for Swindon, won the league with Swindon in, in 2012. Um, an exciting young prospect. Yeah, I've not seen too much of him. A few races here and there in Poland. Um, you know, tonight will be interesting for him. You know, a little bit tighter turns. Yeah, but different track. I think yep. Birmingham will suit him down the ground because it's, it's very roundy. Uh, yep. A roundy track and where you can build momentum. So... With that sort of style, uh, Polish style and and, uh, and speed, you know, I think he'll be good for Birmingham. Yeah, coming in at four, um, part of a, a Wolves trio that have made their way over um, from the closure of Wolves that you all know really well. Uh, Stevie Worrell, fantastic team man. Great to watch, Steve. Uh, fantastic rider. If he can find consistency, uh, he'll be. He is the engine room of that team. Yeah. Because um, he he could easily go to number one if he starts the season really well. Uh, so if Stevie's firing he'll get he'll get the team uh, you know rolling along really well yeah fantastic uh, and another man needs no introduction seven times British champion uh, Scott has stepped into the breach um, due to the uh, muscle injury of, of Piotr Paulicki um, so we'll see Scott in a Brummies race jacket for a short while 
a great guy to bring in for a short period. Especially for Oxford as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Absolutely. There's not a lot more you can say about Scotty. Uh, he'll give 110% uh, professional. Uh, and if he can get a good result uh, tonight, you know, for Birmingham, get, get them firing on all cylinders, what a way to start. Yeah, and looking at their reserve berth, two riders again that have come across from Wolves that you all know pretty well, uh, Zach Cook and Leon Flint. That's a strong pairing at reserve, those two boys. Yeah, I think so. And the, uh, the chemistry there will be good. You know, with the three Wolves boys, that will benefit Birmingham. Um, I think a, a big year for Leon. He really, really, I think this is the year he needs to step up. Um, and with Zach, he was a slow burner last year and someone who could go into the main body of the team. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that's the two sides. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this meeting develops. The track isn't what we thought the track was going to be. Like I say, you did a bit of a track wall, didn't you, early on when you got here? Yeah, it, it, it's hard. It's, it's, it's surprisingly with the amount of rain we've had in, in recent months, it's very, very hard. The, the lighting is making it look wetter than what it actually is. That's right, yeah, yeah, um, deceiving. Yeah, very deceiving, because if you kick it a little bit, normally with the amount of rain we've had, the moisture comes up. Uh, and you can see there from, yeah, from that image, yeah. look, And Rory, that, that literally is just on top. Yeah. Underneath is quite good. Uh, Jamie's done a fantastic job to, ha you, know, you know, it could have been easily off. If they didn't tire pack it, they knew the rain was coming, and they've made the, they've made the right call. And when you say, uh, again, tire pack, it basically means you've made that surface as hard as you can make it so that any of that surface water will just essentially run off yeah. or disperse. Well, and, and, and if they've kept it dry enough, not soak in. Yeah. And it, literally that's what's happened. Yes, it does look wet, but I think after three, four races, I think the racing will come good. And if it does do what I expect it to do, the dirt line will mature quite nicely and people like Bomber will... Uh, Come into their the, own. Licking their lips. Yeah, that's right. And we came here a couple of times last year when, when, when BSM were here. And uh, it'd be interesting to see because we had a couple of meetings that were very similar to that. Um, and the conditions were, were the same. Just looking at the boys now, they're, they're, they're having a look at that start line. Packed all the way around. So maybe the start line is a slightly different proposition to what they might have thought they were going to get. Yeah, if, if you have a look there, uh, gate four, they did have a little scratch at it. And then they went And again. you can see that from the yeah, lines. They yeah, they actually went against scratching the rest of the start. Uh, and I think they've made the right call there because I think if they had broken into the surface, you open it up to the elements, and I think you're going over it all the time with the tractor, with the bike wheels as well, it'll just start picking up. So they've kept it hard, they've kept it firm. Now, the only thing that will be a concern for the guys is once the soil goes from the ruts, because they did have press day here, and you can see the ruts, they will get mount so much wheel spin because there will be moisture in the air as well. So starting and setups for that will be very important. Uh, well, do you think the? Obviously it's, it's hard to know because Birmingham haven't been on track. A lot of these guys haven't had any tracks, and they might have been abroad to have a little bit, but there's been very little over in this country. Will that make a huge amount of difference to the Oxford guys having a bit of track time here yesterday? I think. Uh, well, it, when everyone's desperate for laps at the minute, yeah, um, yeah definitely. They've uh, obviously had spent at least three, three and a half hours on the track here yesterday. Yeah. Conditions are obviously a little bit different, but yeah, they're going to have more laps under their belly, especially around this track they're racing on tonight. Yeah, it's good. It's an exciting prospect, and it's uh, it's great to have the season it's the season up and running already. Um, Stevie Worrell there being interviewed. Um, he was part of that Wolf makeup. Um, he'd been there with, uh, with 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 Zach and with Leon. Um, like you say, that chemistry that those three could bring, that could be, they, you know, that will help and it will work around, especially with new guys like Victor coming in and Vatclav, who don't know that many people over here. It will, because Birmingham did put their team together quite late. Yep. So, you know, uh, sometimes when you do get a Polish rider come in, uh, you know, Vatclav is, is, is Czech, like, they can be a little bit, you know, yeah, yeah, within themselves. Right. Yep. But I think with the three lads from, from Wolves, you know, the chemistry will already be there, you know, riding with each other for a couple of years. And, and, and let's be fair, Leon's not quiet, is he? No, no. Uh, <laughs> surprising Stevie. Yeah, Stevie yeah. can tell a joke or two as yeah, well. Yeah, that's so. good. <laughs> but, yeah, and then Scott obviously rode for us at the beginning of the year yeah. last year as well. So yeah. the chemistry will be good. Um, you know, on paper, they don't look the strongest team. But we've seen it in the past when Birmingham, I think they reached the playoffs with Doyley and A few years Selinsky. ago, yeah, that's and right. They, yeah, that's right. They said they'd be wooden spoons, yeah. and they actually made the playoffs. Yeah, they so did. Got people pulled, if yeah. they could do that again, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, and, and, and you don't know, dear, it's, it's a blank canvas. Everyone's starting the season afresh. But a lot of people have picked up on the fact that they do look weaker than the others. As a rider, when you read that, does that spur you on? Does that make you think, or do you, are you already in the right mindset that you're not bothered what people say? The, the sport's got to that point now. They're all professional, and they're all pros. Um, so, you know, it's a bit blasé, it's hearsay when they hear things like that. 
Um, no doubt they'll know, you know, that the team on paper doesn't look fantastic, but it's down to them at the end of the day. Um, and they're the only ones that can have an outcome on the result. So, yeah, uh, prove everybody wrong. That's yeah. the that, that's the thing. So with the with the corn toss, we'll find out in a minute where uh, where that's gone. Um, if you were skipper of either of these two sides, Rory, what would be your mindset early on? So, well, looking at the starts, it wasn't necessarily the actual start line that I was looking at because it was all pretty much the same. Hard ruts there from yesterday's press day. It was two, three yards beyond that, and gates one and two there was a lot more material there, a lot more compared to three and four. So I would be looking at making sure I have the inside gates later on in the night because I think they'll come okay. back into play. So yep. that, that, as a captain, that's what I'd sort of be looking at. Um, you know, track grading will, will, will make an effect in that, but looking at where that material was, gate one's notoriously pretty good here, but yeah, gates one and two. So I think if you take gates one and two, uh, gates one and three, I think you get the, you get them three times over the last four races okay, leading into it can swing, yeah. yeah so yeah that that for me it'd have to be one and three yeah brilliant I um, mean the Birmingham riders have just been introduced to the crowd there and it's uh it's, it's interesting looking at the averages and the way that that has fallen I mean Scott on a on a five two eight or whatever Scott's on is is crazy really because you know he can exceed that and I know he's in only in for a short period of time. Um, but just looking at Matt Sarnowski, that's a sign, isn't it? That's what we wanted to see in British Speedway, that level of rider coming back over. Look, he's still one of the top riders in Poland. He might not. He had a very, very... And he, and he will agree, he had a very disappointing year last year in the Grand Prix. And it's great to see him back. But he's the kind of rider that he'll come here and he'll, he'll mean business. And he's a big name. Yeah. And he's yeah, the huge. kind of rider that when he goes up against a Heat 13 with an Amor or a Doily, it ain't going to phase him. Um, it'll just be another. It'll just be another race to him. Where the other lads, it'll be a bit different. You know, when you go up against people like that, it for him, it's just business. And um, I think he'll be a fantastic sign. And isn't it terrific that we're talking about that prospect of him, of Doily, of, 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 of Matt? In that, you know, that's just brilliant. The big 13s oh, and 15s. Yeah, of, of yesterday, I used to like love watching when it was Tony. Uh, uh, yeah, Ricards and yeah, Adams Crump, versus Crump. Adams, yeah, yeah it, I tell you what, they were tasty nights. Yeah, they were. weren't they ever? Yeah, yeah, weren't they ever? And it's great. We, we, we're getting a bit of that back at the top end of the sport, which is which is magic and what we all we all want to see. Um, Rowan, he'll be on cloud nine. He'll be he'll be up for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, become a father in, in the in the off season as well. And again, obviously winning the Australian Championship against uh, some big names back home. So uh, he, yeah, I, I just think you know. He's slender, he's, he's small. Um, I think he's been signed for a way, uh, you know, because yeah. I just think he's that kind of rider. He'll just score big, especially Sheffield, Bellevue. Um, you know, Kings Lim will suit him. Yeah, that's good, that's good. We're looking at Louis Kerr there. Uh, popular, very popular here. Last year, he's a, he's a heart and sleeve kind of guy. He gives everything. Um, and then there's that rising star, Ashlyn Bojan. Both um, fantastic gators as well. Yeah. Fantastic gators. So, and that's even and again there. tonight, early on. Yeah. Um, they're going to be... They're just Oxford, for me, on paper, looks fantastic. If I was a, a, you know, an Oxford fan in the Premiership, mate, I, I would be very excited for this year. Yeah, I was talking to Ashton Bojan's dad in the, in the pits when I got here, and, and we were having that same conversation. He's done plenty of laps too. A Abs lot of laps Absolutely. Recently. He's kind of... He's gone for it, and he's really gone for it. And, and that's what his dad was saying. That he's... Ashton's embraced it. He's really gone for it, and, and his development over the course of last year was in, was incredible. Um, and he's he's almost got something to prove, but the team should be winning the the meetings above him. So that one to six, it's perfect. It is. It's it's. They've, Oxford have really played this well. How they've yeah. built this team, uh, they've more or less shepherded him. Um, but it's Peter Schropp that almost found Ashton, wasn't yep. it, and brought him to yep. the sport, brought him I, to Oxford. I had not heard of him. And no. then uh, one day he, tu he turned up at the training the training school for G GB Youth, and I was blown away of yeah, his talent. Uh, his dating ability was oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, I, okay. I'd, I'd take five of them every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because you do a lot of those training sessions, don't you? So you see a lot of those boys coming Le up. Yeah, Leon, Tom, uh, Drew Kemp, uh, Dan Buley, they all come through the, the youth program. Do you, um, do, you, do you find that they're... they're receptive to you do you find that they listen and yeah, they take on board what you say the the best thing about the program is it's not just me it, we we bring in other riders we've, yeah. we've flown in Matty Zager you know Ty comes in and does a few days um, so we we encourage other riders you know Scotty's come down uh, the best thing about it is it's not limited we, we want the experience we want the knowledge of all experienced riders 
because every rider will react different and respond different to different riders. So, um, you know, and there's a good core of young lads coming through this That's year. what I was going to ask, because you see that more than any of us see that, you know, that, and that's pleasing to hear. Because the 250 scene's really picking up amazing. as well. That's brilliant. Um, when you've got, uh, you know, local engine tuners like Peter Johns investing heavily in 250 engines is a sign that the 250 scene is growing. You know, when engine tuners start investing in, in development and, and progress in the 250 engines, that, that means only a good thing for, for British Speedway because there's more youngsters get jumping on the bikes. Do you think that's why we've maybe dropped behind a little bit over the last 20 years because of that level of the racing and bringing the kids through? Look, I, I have been a little bit critical on, on what, you know, British Speedway's done for youth and, 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 I still and I still think we can do more. But, you know, this program, which is done by through a lot of private investors and, 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 and a lot of time has been invested into it and it's only going to benefit British Speedway. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's good to hear. That's brilliant. So the boys have had a couple of laps. Uh, they've practiced starts. They've seen the starts. We'll get the nod on uh, on the gate positions in a minute for you and we can we can let you know. It might be that they roll up to tapes and we find out that way. But, uh, it's like the big bash with the bat, you know, where they flip the bat. That's there, it. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Um, but yeah, I th I'm really just really pleased that they've managed to get the meeting on. I'm really delighted for Oxford because they put the work in um, uh, and they've been able to combat the, the, the rain that we've had this afternoon. And, and we've got ourselves a Speedway meeting, the opening meeting of the season. Well, yeah, I wasn't that concerned. Even with, when the rain was falling, because I'd done that walk and it, it was so hard packed in, I didn't really weren't that concerned. And you could see that there was, hard, well, what do you say, hardly, not much moisture underneath. Yeah. So, you know, whatever moisture is on top is going to soak in. Um, don't get me wrong, if you don't make the start in heat, one, you, you yeah, are going to get covered in a, get bit of, filled in a bit of brown stuff. So, But you, you, you were saying as well that as the as the races develop, there's going to be a line, isn't there? There's, there's going to be an outside run that is going to favour a handful I think of these riders. four or six favor. races, it, it, there, will be a, there will be a racing line. Um, so early on, is it is it make the gate? Is it going to be a bit, are we going to be a little bit follow the leader for a couple of heats? You'll see some itchy fingers, I know yeah, that, once yeah. that green light comes on. First <laughs> yeah. one of the year, always is. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. And Vaclav, there he is on screen. He's going to be out in heat one. I think it's a, bit, it's a nice introduction, this, this this kind of track for him. Um, would you class this as a tricky track? It is. It, it, on TV, it doesn't look tight, but it, it is. It, okay, because um, it, it, sorry, Rory, with, the, with the work they did to the track last year, they, 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 you know, they made it two metres wider on either side. They did bed. open it up, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it offered different lines and, and almost, you got the feeling it wasn't tight anymore. No, it did open it up and it made the first corner more interesting as well. Yeah. Um, it gave you a few more options. Uh, so, look, I, I think the way you enter the corners here now, you don't enter them as violent. You know, you don't get it as sideways. Okay. But you do get to a point where you've got to turn it and stand it, you know, get st stood on your right leg. Because um, if you do drift past, like especially here in uh, turns one and two, you can drift a little bit too high if you run up too deep. Uh you know, I've seen. I, I got dusted up by both Sam and, and Scott here yeah, last year yeah. because of that. And uh, you know, it, it will be technical for the likes of Ackler and, and Lampard. Yeah. Um, but the best thing for that to calm the nerves, get in front. Yeah, get the, make the get game. in front. Get yourself up front. Yeah. Because like you say, you're going to get filled in. First couple of heats, you're gonna you're gonna be wearing some round stuff, aren't you? If you uh, yeah. if you miss the gate. But it is again, Piotr coming in public is a great sign and an exciting signing for me. But to have someone like Scott there with those new returning, you know, riders to the that, that's, that's got to be a good thing. That's got to be just thing. experience, and obviously, again, coming here, he's going to give the lads a lot of knowledge. You know, I think there's there hasn't been anyone more that's done any more lap, more laps than, than yeah. Scott Nichols ran here. Um, so I think that's a smart signing from Birmingham to bring someone in very experienced, especially at a track he knows very well first up. Uh, and Scotty rides uh, Birmingham very well as well. well. So yeah, and he'll be professional. You know, and he, Scott's got nothing to lose. As in, he can just go there and be himself, ride as hard as he wants. And he did the same for us at the walls. And he was probably riding the best I've seen him ride for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was trying to put a bit of it in the bottle and, and use it myself, but uh, well, he, I've, he I've didn't have anything spare. I've got to be I've got to be honest. When uh, we knew that Paolo, he wasn't coming over, me and my eldest son had a bit of a, a wager, and I, I did lose a couple of quid on you. So I, th I thought you might have been getting the nod there for a while. Um, but my son said I'm Scott, so I owe him a couple of quid. I'm semi-retired. <laughs> That's the memo that went out. <laughs> <laughs> that soon changes, doesn't it? That soon changes. 
I was retired once before, but I know yeah. I didn't last very long, did it? Nah. <laughs> it's one of those things, and the amount of spear riders we see that do make a call. I mean, my father was one of them. He, you know, he stopped in 1980. By 1983, he had to come back and have another go. I think that's the nature of the rider within you. It's hard to stop, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't hard for me to stop. I did get to the point where I'd had enough, but um, it was just a sense of doing something normal. You know, having a bit of a whirlwind 18 months and come back and go racing again and, yeah. and it was as simple as that and you come back to winning as well don't you if you, if you come back and you don't win and you're not beating people you think you should be beating then it, it, your mindset changes again I would imagine the, the, hem, the helmet will be hung up yeah that's right yeah that's right so here we're getting close to heat one now uh, the boys are out on track uh, it looks like uh, Oxford have got uh, one and three uh, the Brummies have got two and four so let's look at that lineup for heat number one off the inside uh, in blue will be Charles Wright next to him in yellow will be Tom Brennan off gate three New number one, Matt Zanowski for uh, for the Oxford Spires. And off the outside is Vaclav Milik in the white helmet colour. So we're all set. Matthew Ware is our referee for this evening. Um, I've got no backward knowledge on uh, on uh, back knowledge on, on Matthew, so we'll see how he goes this evening. Hopefully it's an easy one for him. Um, but with conditions as they are, he might have a couple of calls to make early on. Always lining up, getting ready. Trying to find early early on is it easy to find the spot that you want to start from early on. Well, the, not the, a lot to, to work with. The the trick would be is obviously don't park in one of the ruts that are full of water. Yeah. So um, that that will be the sketchy part. But uh, and like you say, from where we're stood, you can you can see them more on the inside, can't you? Well, Vaclav's pulled up right up against the fence, and there's notoriously a big rut here at Oxford, right up against the fence. So I'll be looking to rip that one out there and uh, get across Magic. Fantastic ride. The 2024 season is underway here. Heat number one, Oxford. Green lights on. Take oh, a bit of a nibble there. We might see the red. Now the referee's let it go. I thought Maddie had a bit of a Maddie had a bit of a, a nibble at the start there, uh, Rory. But the Oxford boys have made a great gate as they go into turns three and four for the first time. Charles on the inside, Magic on the outside. But Tom's putting a bit of pressure on. Tom's got some good speed, you know, on the inside, and it's oh, they're getting locked up really hard there. But yeah, Vaclav got a little bit impatient there, and that that really cost him. Yeah, I, I didn't know if the referee was going to bring that one back early on because it looked like Magic did have a little bit of a nibble at the start, but the refs let it go. Magic's got himself out front. He's got that clean air that we were talking about. Charles has tucked in, but Tom isn't giving up. Tom's got some speed. He's set up, I think the bike set up a little bit more aggressive than Charles. But that's that's to be expected with Charles, but he's been smooth. Uh, he's been smart. If, if Tom's going to have any chance, he needs to go around him, but uh, not with that much water. No, it's looking like it's going to be a 5-1 early on as long as nothing drastic happens. Uh, and it's difficult for Tom because you've got to drift off that line to get in front of the man in front when there is only one line early on. And that's a great start for the Oxford Spires. It's a win for Matt Zanowski. Second place is Charles Wright, uh, forever battling Tom Brennan there in third. And Vaclav got filled in early on, missed the trap and struggled back there in fourth place. So a terrific start for Oxford. Yeah, I think we'll see that in the replay and we'll watch Vaclav. Uh, he had a little chirp and it almost put magic through the tapes as well, I it think. It did, yeah. So, um, and yeah, I agree. I was surprised they didn't pull that back. I thought that might um, come back, yeah. But uh, yeah, fantastic start uh, for Oxford. Yeah, watch just here for a second. Watch Matt there. And oh, yeah. so it's actually Vaclav that goes first. Vaclav went first. Yeah. And that, if anything, that gave uh, magic, uh, you know, an advantage yeah. because he had that momentum. So that's, again, I agree with you. I'm surprised they didn't call that back. But, uh, yeah, as I said, predicted, there was going to be some itchy fingers. And um, Charles did fantastic there, kept it tight, allowed Magic to come around the outside. And, uh, you know, and even better for Magic, he made sure he wasn't running too tight to fill in Charles. Because Tom was pushing, eh? Tom was really pushing there. Yeah, Tom, with, he's got fantastic throttle control. But, yeah, I think, to be expected, Charles would have set that bike up easy to ride. Yeah. First official ride back since, you know, his accident. So, but for him, that's a fantastic result and he'll and a, build on confidence. And a fantastic start for the Oxford Spires there with a win for Magic. Uh, second place was Charles Wright. Tom Brennan coming home in third and Vaclav just going there, finding the going a bit too tough there in heat one. But again, it's all a learning curve for him. He's coming back to tracks. He's not, he's not seen. So, you know, not. He'll not definitely make a change. Yeah. 100% he'll make a change. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? You're coming back in now. Well, they've had a quick word with the, the reserves something positive negative that you've experienced and back into the pits to make a change on your bike yeah. i think yeah looking out and and hearing their bikes they were set up really aggressive like i mean they were revving they were spinning yes it's wet and probably hard um but it is a very clay based track yeah so and some of the lads said there was a bit a few grippy spots yesterday um at, at present practice so and if you've been here before and there's just that little bit of moisture it can be deceivingly grippy so I reckon they will start detuning very quickly. Yeah, 
Okay, let's see how heat two pans out. Uh, Zach Cook finds himself off the inside in, in heat number two. He'll be in the white helmet colour. Louis Kerr, red helmet colour, he'll be off of gate two. Leon Flint, he'll be wearing the yellow helmet colour off of gate three. And off of gate four will be Ashton Bogen in the blue helmet colour. And very much like Vaclav, he's he's quite wide on that on that start line, Rory. Yeah, um, like I said, there is a rut there. Uh, but it's literally two yards after, it's rock hard. And there's no material there whatsoever. So even if you do get the jump, you're going to have to start coming across hard. So uh, you don't get away with it in Poland, but you do get away with it a little bit more here. Uh, riders like to tow in a little bit, especially off gate four. And you see them off, off gate one as well. They tow, it, tow out yeah. uh, to give themselves a wider berth into the corner. Um, I think I think Zach might have, have the edge here. I think just gate one is that, that bet better than, than the others. But carry on gate two. If he gets over, it could be an interesting one. And like you say, it'll be uh, keenest mustard to make that start. So here we are, looking good for heat number two. Start Marshall's happy. Tapes go up, clean start this time. Ashton looks like he's made a good one off the outside. As a Zach off the inside, you called it. Louis tucked in nicely to second place with a tight line coming round one and two. Zach out front looking comfortable. The Oxford Spires at the moment have packed themselves into second and third. Uh, a good start there from the inside. Yeah, uh, Zach did everything right in the first quarter. Didn't drift up too wide, uh, uh, wide in the first corner. Ashton actually made a great start. It just didn't come across hard enough early on and uh, got covered in, in, in dirt, you know, coming off the corner. You can just see the lads are still trying to find their way around that, you know. Yeah, and they, they, they're getting second, third, fourth really filled in. Very tentative looking Leon Flint at the back there, but Louis putting uh, Zaka under a bit of pressure out the front, but Zach's riding a tight line, nothing silly. Um, and he's got to, Louis has got to make that move, hasn't he? That's the thing. Well, Zach's doing pretty well for a guy that hasn't thrown his leg over a bike yet. Absolutely. And, and then bikes are brand new. Yeah, so, oh, really. <laughs> Uh, he's probably just playing safe, you know, not overdoing it, not over-revving it, going to the corner, so... Yeah, Leon, uh, Louis was putting him under a bit of pressure, but just drifted there as he was coming around too. So that's a, that's a great win in heat number two for Zach Cook. Louis Kerr comes home in second place. Ashton Bojan made a good start there and managed to hold on to third. Um, and a tough opening heat there for Leon. It's going to be tough for anybody early on that doesn't make that start. It and is, is and we said back. that. We said it was going to, you know, it, when it's wet, it's difficult. Um, yes, they've got tear-offs, but it's hard to take your hand off a handlebar when you're doing 60-odd mile an hour. Absolutely. So. But you called it. You said it would be a, a good start off yeah, the inside I, I from just Zach. There, I thought if Ashton had come across, he would have possibly got a slightly better run around the outside. Because he made a good trap, didn't he? He did, a very good trap. Um, but yeah, Zach was just was inch perfect, you know, um, smooth. Uh, and just wasn't overdoing it either. Like Louis was going in pretty hard there a few times and he was, he was sort of just getting the corners wrong where he was having to turn harder than what he wanted to. Uh, but yeah, Zach was just smooth. And when you make that gate and you've got that fresh end, you've got that track, and in these conditions as well, you, you're forcing the guy in second to go off that line and make a move and they're not necessarily going to do that early on. Well, in these conditions, stay on the inside, stay on the make inside. them go around, get them filled in. So, yeah. Uh, But yeah, like I said, I think a few more races, they may do a track prep and yeah. then we might see that line start to move out a little bit more. As, that, as, as the races develop. So it's 8-4, uh, it's, it's a, a three-all uh, heat result then. And the good thing at the minute now, every track's got the two-minute clock. So, you know, before there might be a bit of a delay, now the two minutes is on, the boys are back around the tapes. It's a great initiative because it keeps us all engaged. They do it in Poland, they yeah, do exactly. it in Sweden, and, and all the riders know the rule. I think it's something that should have been brought in years ago. Years ago, ago. we got um, it now. We got it now. That's it, the riders see it, the fans see it. You know, there's no arguing. Exactly. You know, we don't shift the goalposts here. No, that's right. That's right. So a man on the inside, Chris Bomber Harris, was making good starts last year. Season surprising himself. He'll be off blue off the inside for Oxford. That's where mine went. Yeah, that's where he took that. He took that. Victor Lampard. He'll be off of white off of gate two. New track to Victor. He's not been here before. Nikolai Clint. He'll be off of red for the Spires off of gate three. And Stevie Worrell, he'll be in the yellow helmet colour off of that wide outside. So will it be the same? Will Bomber get that gate off of, uh, of the man that starts off gate one? He's definitely got the best gate. Um, but I think Stevie, with his gating ability, I think you'll see a more aggressive gate four. Uh, like where Ashton made a, a reasonably good start, good start was there. Yep. Where I think if Stevie gets even half an inch across, he's coming across hard. He just has that ability. He has that aggression in the first corner. Uh, so this could be a tight first corner. And it'd be interesting to see how Victor Victor gets on. If he, if he does make the start and he gets himself out front, will he have that composure to hold on? We shall soon see. Heat number three, head four to Oxford as we speak. Tapes go up, even break, bomber. A good start from the inside and also from the outside as well, as we called it. Uh, man down at the back, you might have caught, not caught that off camera. Uh, bomber is out front. 
Uh, at the moment, we've got the Brummies in second and third. Um, yep, yeah, he's up and off the track. So, Bomber, great gate. He finds himself up front. Absolutely launched off gate one. Uh, absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah, that was Nikolai in the first Nikolai, corner. Just yeah. come round on him. You know, that's that's just sort of something you've got to put up with in these conditions. But uh, Bomber, just being perfect. It's what you've got to do in these conditions. Stevie made a good start. Um, but throttle control is going to be fair. Oh, Stevie. A big locker there. Yeah, Lampart done well there to slow it up. Yeah, he did. And uh, it, it's probably a nice thing for Victor just to, to pack in and have no threat behind him. First time on this track. One lap to go. Chris is looking good out front. In control. Uh, Stevie's in second place. Victor not doing anything OTT in there, just holding on to that third place. And Nikolai, you've got to stay, get back on, keep going, because you don't know what's going to happen. Especially in these conditions, yeah. yeah absolutely. 100%. So, uh, yeah, it is a three-all. Great win for Bomber. Out front, no messing. Stevie in second place, and uh, a point for Victor Lampart on his Birmingham debut. This is good for Birmingham. I yeah, think pack this it is, in. I think this yeah. is good. Um, you know, they, they didn't have the good gates, and the, yeah, obviously, yeah, 5-1 in the heat one, but they're not losing any ground. That's right. So, um, Bomber, out from, the out from the start. Let's watch it. Let's you watch know, it if he's going to make them all year, look out. And he was doing it last year. He was making great gates last year. Well, we had a bit of a nibble little, too. Tiny a little nibble, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny bit. That, it's beginning of the year. Everyone's just a bit itchy to get it's going. Eager to get going. So, yeah, there's the, there is the result. Uh, Chris Harris, uh, he's a flip that around. Chris Harris there with the win. He was out front with the three points. Nikolai dropped it, unfortunately, in the first turn. Got back on, remounted, but didn't threaten the scorers. Uh, Stevie Worrell, he was in second place there. Um, and Victor Lampart came home in third place. So uh, another 3-3. Three, three, keeps the scores at 11-7. to seven. And like you say, Birmingham would be pleased with that. They'll take that at the moment. Definitely a little bit greasier than I thought in turn one because it did look drier. Yeah. Um, so that was quite. that's quite surprising. They, they're getting a little bit more in trouble in turn one than they are in turns three and four. Yeah, so. Louis and Steve then, they've both yeah. gone across the corner, haven't yep. they? Um, in their respective heats, um, is that is that just? It's just surface water. Yeah. And and hopefully, a couple more races. I know you know I've been there so many times where people give it a couple of races, give it a crop, and it's so frustrating as a rider because if you don't make the start, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, of it's course. absolutely yeah. terrible. Um, but you know that that's when you know gating becomes so important. You know it's an art. You yeah. know, and you're notorious good gaiters. You know that's why they're there, good at it. Um, so. You look at Ashton's bike there. That uh, yeah, he's taken. Going to take more than one Brillo pad to get that shiny an in again. Incredibly clean Rowan Tungate there. He's coming out for his, his opening ride, and there's Ashton. So you, that's, you can see what he's up against if you or any of the riders are up against if you miss the start. He's but he's got, got gate one now. He's got gate one, so can he produce what the other boys? And like you say, he can trap. I'm just watching Rowan at the start there, and he's literally dropping his clutch and spinning the back wheel a lot. <laughs> He certainly is. He's, so try, he's trying to clear out as much wetness <laughs> inside them ruts. Can before the heat. So what we'll see and in not this be, Not being classed as spinning that back wheel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll do that. Ashton Bojan, he'll be off the inside in blue. Next to him in yellow will be Leon Flint. They're both out for their second rides. Ashton picked up one point in his first ride. Leon failed to score. First outings for Rowan Tungate in red. He'll be off of gate three. And Scotty Nichols, he will be in the white helmet colour off of gate four. So two big guns on the outside less experienced boys on the inside um, but will that first race bit of track knowledge will that hold them in good stead or will the boys on the outside make the start here we go takes up on heat number four. Oh, rowan's gone rowan's gone 100 percent yeah i think gate three i think that could be the graveyard tonight everyone's been having a having a chirp especially off three and four but rowan was spinning yeah, the back wheel constantly again here, Rory, if, we, uh, if we scan the screen and yeah, oh that, yeah, that he's had two chops at it. All yeah. Him, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't prompted by no. anybody else there. I was just hauling. So, what do you do now as Peter Schrock? Do you? I would. Well, my because you don't want to change the gate positions around. I would literally. Oh, uh, is that rule changed this year? I, if the it's the same. Yeah. They stay. Yeah, well, that's changed. good. I like that. I, yeah. oh, I hated that rule. So would you? I always <laughs> thought there was a few riders that do that on purpose. Would you, would you stick with Rowan? Um. Throw, or would you throw Louis back yeah, in? Louis I would, Kerr, I, you know what? I would throw Louis out. Yeah. Just because by the obviously he can gate, and there's just no, there's no sense in sending Rowan out because he's, it, there's no momentum to be gained at the minute. There's no lines out there. You bet, um, you're, you're better off having someone going off tapes in these and conditions. If, and if Louis can just get it to bite, yeah. You know, it works for him. 
Uh, so that it doesn't look like he's going to change him over. Not at the moment, it yeah. doesn't. I, I would, because I don't think, you know, it, there's just nothing there for Rowan to chase. No, that's right. You're, you're, you're fighting a losing battle in many respects. Whereas if you put Louis off the tapes, he's already out of heat. Yeah. Um, but like you say, there's this thing where moving, he's still out on track there. And he's having a talk with him now. See what they do. But yeah, that's inevitable, yeah. you know. Oh, like, it looks like that bike's going. Like you were saying. Maybe. There is Pete, he's talking. That's Peter Schrock there, yeah. with glasses on the head. He's the team manager of the uh, Oxford Spies, Cheetahs and Chargers. He's got a busy year ahead of him, Peter. Um, yeah. They're but, swapping him over. But again, right? as a rider, would you would you be happy? Yeah, brilliant. Stick Louis off. Not you don't want to ride. I, I think I think it's not ideal. You want to ride, but I think the sensible, the, the, sim, the simplest thing would be I'm going to spend four laps eating dirt. Yeah. For not a lot of gain, uh, you'd be hoping someone would make some mistakes or fall off. So yeah, it looks like Louis coming out. That is Louis I think there. yeah, that's a great decision. Yeah, I think that's the right decision. And, and again, in, in, in other conditions, sometimes you do look at it from the perspective of it's better to get that rider some laps so he can get a feel for the track. But in these conditions, <laughs> you're not going to gain, are you? No, you're again, not yeah. Gain. You're not going to gain. So we will see Louis Kerr. So uh, Rowan Tungate for touching the tapes. He will be out and Louis Kerr will come in as that replacement. Uh, but again, this is what we're talking about, the strength that the, the Spires have got this year to be able to bring Louis in. Is, uh, is, you know, for Peter, that's that's wonderful to have. Because if you had another inexperienced rider, you may just start with Rowan. But because you've got the likes of Billy Kerr sat in reserve, you can stick him out. I think that will happen throughout the year, even when, if say, one of them are having an off night. Yeah. You know, and then, say, if Louis does go up, whoever you put down there, you can always say, well, hit the, them heat 12s and heat 14s. Yeah. That's As you right, said, yeah. he's going to have a busy year, and he will be busy in the sense of, He'll have that many options. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the other managers would, managers would love to have that kind of option. Yeah, he certainly has. And to be able to bring Louis into this heat is, uh, is fantastic for him and for them. So the boys are coming back up to tapes. We'll just run through that lineup again. It will be Ashton Bowden in blue off the inside in gate one. Leon Flynn failed to score in his first out in. He will be off gate two in the yellow helmet colour. Um, off gate three, reserve substitute will be Louis Kerr in for Rowan Tungay, who had a couple of nibbles and went through those tapes. And Scott Nichols in on a short term deal here at Birmingham um, for the uh, injured Piotr Paulicki. He'll be back soon for them. Um, but a terrific replacement and a man that knows this track so, so well. He's had a couple of fantastic years here um, and he certainly knows the fastest way around this track. So you can see that the, the, the rut start to develop on the inside there where Ashton's lining up. A lot of the ruts were they're already there. Were they from, yeah, from yesterday? So yesterday. Yeah, because yeah, um, they had their press practice day yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And the frustrating thing is when you get to the bottom of it, if any moisture comes up, the guys develop more wheel spin. Well, let's see what he can do with that inside then in blue is Ashton Bowden. Let's see what he can produce with the takes. Louis Kerr, that's what Peter wanted to see for the Spires. Great start. And Ashton Bowden looks like he's tucked into second. Scott's going to have a look around the outside. Beautiful run from Scott. Picks off around the outside. Important Ashton just settles now and holds on to that third place. Uh, and Scott, he'll give chase to uh, Louis out front. Yeah, I think Louis definitely made some changes because that start was phenomenal. Beautiful, it just yeah. absolutely drove. As soon as he dropped the clutch, he went forward. Uh, yeah, Scotty got around Ashton early on uh, and they'll probably just settle in now. But you can just see it now. They're starting to drift off that inside line um, and there'll probably be a track grade now. So the lines will change. Yeah, just coming a little bit wider, but a, a really nice line. Great start from Louis. He's got himself out front. That's exactly why Peter Schrock made that substitute move. And, place in Rome with him. Scott is comfortable in second, it's uh, starting to string out a little bit and an important third place, if you know no last places that's the key and Ashton Bowden just keeping on to that third place but uh, pretty settled heat this one already. Pretty much, it was from the start, we knew that and uh, Curry, unbelievable, that's yeah. why he's at reserve uh, and uh, you know you're going to see a lot more of that. Terrific reserve to have, a win for Louis Kerr out front. Uh, relatively straightforward uh, second place for Scott Nichols once he got around the outside of Ashton Bojan he held on to that third and as an inexperienced rider when someone goes past you it can give you a wobble it can throw you off he settled pretty quickly nice third fourth turn you just saw just a little bit of inexperience here because he was in a commanding position yeah I thought you know he was get um, the run at one and point. literally if you watch here you watch him come off the corner he could have moved out could have stopped Scott's run just there instead of turning it hard he could have just drifted up a little bit it just gave Scott you know, that split second, yeah. I can commit to the outside. Uh, Scott then dropped it back down the inside, covered that spot, uh, and pretty much tucked in for second place through then. But that'll be, that'll be brilliant from a, um, uh, an Oxford perspective that you've got Ashton 
outgating someone like Scott Nichols. Yep. That's brilliant. Exactly, yeah. and I said that at the beginning of the show. His gating ability is fantastic. And, uh, you know, the more times he will get in front, and that will build confidence. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, you know, he's still a young lad. He's got a lot to learn. Yeah, absolutely. So that makes the progressive scores 15-9. And again, I think Birmingham will be relatively happy with this at the moment. Six points. Six-point gap. Something there for... for the guys to play with obviously Sam and Malenko we haven't mentioned Sam Chris Adams yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris and, and Sam they've taken over the reins this year um, and Sam a great guy to have you know uh, former world champion former you know world champion, uh, has been around for years uh, has ridden with the best ridden at this track uh, obviously back in the day but um, you know Sam's full of absolute uh, knowledge um, Chris is a good guy to have in the pits uh, to talk to he's, he's, one, he's been a mechanic for many many years mechanic for top riders and he'd be that kind of guy that one of the guys could talk to and, and not necessarily give advice just to allow to speak and, yeah. and Chris is very good at that and he's got a very likeable persona as well so and that will wear off and the connect uh, activity with the Wolves guys as well yeah, of course so the chemistry yeah, will be a, there again that's a good angle on that one so no track rate they've gone straight into the two minute clocks on we've got a minute and 40 and the boys are coming around to tapes is that a bit of a surprise for you maybe not um maybe they're going to give it a few more races before they go out there because uh, i think the track's holding up reasonably well yeah um agree. so maybe they might just give it a bit of a dust up you know after hit eight they're, they're obviously not worried too worried about what it's doing um yeah absolutely so tom tommy brown and he finds himself off of gate one in this heat uh, one point first time out, even the yellow helmet colour. Next to him, Nikolai Klin. Uh, he dropped it in the first race, unfortunately, but got back on, continued to race, and got some laps under his belt. He'd be in the red helmet colour off of gate two. Uh, Vaclav Milik, he'd be in white off of gate three. He failed to score first time out. Uh, and Chris Bomber Harris, he picked up a full three points. What it says there for the moment, he did win his first race, Scotty, uh, Chrissy Harris, and he'll find himself off of the outside. Um, so, starting to get you, all the boys have now got a bit of track time. Um, it's important for Nikolai Clint that he continued that race because you still gain something from putting those laps in. Um, but Nikolai will be very keen to get away from yeah, the tape. So, yeah, uh, most definitely. You know, most possibly. Definitely. He's, he's, he's notorious for a little bit of movement at the start. So, I think you could see a good, uh, definitely a flyer or a good start here from Nikolai. Let's wait and see. All the boys are at tapes again. We'll start Marshall Staffy ready to go. Takes her up and a great start for gate four for Bomber. And it looks like Nikolai's joined him. If he can ride a nice tight line, Chris on the outside, Nikolai on the inside. That's beautiful viewing for the Oxford Spires as they take in turns three and four for the first time. Uh, one inside, one outside. Nice bit of team riding so far. Bomber's gate like an absolute demon. Uh, it's just so good to see. Uh, and Nikolai made a really, really jump, a good jump and got across early. And, uh, you know, they just settled in quite yeah. nicely there well, here comes Vaclav oh, he's having a sniff yeah he's got some pace Vaclav he's all over the back of Nikolai and he to be fair uh, that might have done him there he was trying different lines he was moving off of the norm that you've seen in the first four heats um, he still looks like he's got some pace but can he bother him in the last uh, in the last lap Roy? just not quite dry enough yet to use that outside line um, but he has got pace which is positive he'll have to take that you know into his next one but uh, Bomber's not putting a foot wrong tonight no he certainly has a terrific gait he's controlled the race out front Nicola had a little bit of a battle there with Vaclav for a, a couple of laps, but settled, settled in for the second place. And that's a big 5-1 for the Oxford Spires. Bomber Harris, Nikolai Clint, Vaclav putting him under loads of pressure there. Nikolai in, in, in second. Uh, he picked up that third place. And uh, and Tom Brennan at the back. Big 5-1. Big 5-1. Might even see a wheelie from Bomber tonight. You never know. I doubt that. <laughs> we'll have a wager. <laughs> we'll have a wager on Let that Let me get one. my phone out. I'll text him. <laughs> yeah. But he's, he's, he was trapping last season, like, he, yeah. he trapped a lot on BSN. And we're, look, like, we're like, Chris, can you not trap on BSN? It's been lucky when you miss the start. Yeah. Look, he's, he's gone through his whole career, you know, being criticised, not being a good gator. And I think he just, you know, accepts that. And we can, we can now see it again off, yeah, of, off the Just floor. absolute launch there. Oh, no power. one's launched like that yeah. tonight. And, and he controlled that bit of lift yeah. as well, didn't he, and continued to drive. Uh, and they just settled in really nicely early on. And his on. bike's pulling really well as well. You see it's picking yeah. up, even on that where it's a little bit sloppy there, mid-track there, because Vaclav tries tries it another lap to go around Nikolai, but literally just runs past the corner. Um, you can see Vaclav's yeah, got the He's got there, momentum, he's yeah. got speed there. I think this is the one where he does have a bit of a look uh, and can't really Come make around it work. A bit. He's trying to get the bike stood there, straightens it up, gets a bit of momentum. 
and Nikolai just goes in a little bit deeper. There it is. See that he hadn't gone in deeper, and that just pushed Vakalov off the race line, and that's so as, all it was. As the meeting develops, that wide line, he could have just carried, be able to carry that on, wouldn't he? Yeah. Go a little bit deeper, and in it'll and get drier. So it will definitely get drier. Yeah, so. and, on, and offer more lines. So yeah, a bit of action in that one. Uh, the, the, the boys are starting to, to test that track out a little bit, and, but we've got a we've got a 2010 gap now. That was three points for Chris in that one. Nikolai picked up the two points. Vaclav Milik the one. And Tom Brennan at the back. That makes a progressive score 20 to the Oxford Spires and 10 to the visiting Birmingham Brummies. So they're keeping it close for a couple of heats, but they're just starting to edge away now. And there's going to be a bit of work for Sam. Uh, Sam, Sam Emelenko to do in the pits. Heat seven, possible change. I think we predicted a possible change. There we go. You heard it here first. We'll see what happens. And again, because we've got this two minute clock, the boys are at tapes ready to go. Uh, Matt Zionowski will be happy with his, uh, his opening ride here. He finds himself off of gate one. We'll see what he can do with that in a minute. We keep this up, we'll be going for his senders. I know. Powerhouse off of gate two, Scott Nichols. Um, be interesting to see to see here how he goes off of gate two with, with uh, magic off the inside of him. Charles Wright, he will wear the blue helmet colour. He'll be off of gate number three. Um, and Zach Cook, who was lightning in heat number two in his first time out, he will go off of gate four. He's yellow and black. As we said, the yellow and black. Now, where's the black anymore? I used to love the yellow and black, but it's just yellow these days. There's the two-minute countdown. We've got 45 seconds to get Scott Nichols round to tapes. You remember the green helmet colour because of the, the sky green. remote. Remember the green. Remember the green very well. Up to the days of Lee Adams I think and that's Jason Brown. Green. Is that gate six? Something yeah. like that? Something like that? Yeah, the old, yeah. yeah, yeah right. gate six. That's right. We're back to the normal red, white, blue. Yeah. But I did like the yellow and black. I still like that, that helmet colour. The old leather helmet yeah. colours. That's where they right. wouldn't stay on for a lap and then pop off after. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pop yeah. off after. And there was a fine introduced after at one point, I remember, if you haven't killed a coffee off. Yeah. Anyway, let's reminisce in more about heat number six. Stop, stop trying to bring back things that's going to cost us money. Matt Zarnowski, Charles Wright, Scott Nichols, Zach Cook. Star Marshall Abbey, green light is on. Boom, away we go. And even break this one. Bit of a pull there off of gate three for Charles Wright. Can he get the run around the outside of Scotty Nichols? Yes, he can. Lovely line there from Charles Wright. Scott Nichols in second, Magic Janowski in third, and currently Zach Cook at the back. In what is a tough heat for him? What can Magic do from there, Rory? Well, he's got pace. It's just whether that line can work. He's just got on the edge of it now. Scott drifts up a little bit. Magic can have a sniff. Uh, Scott's lifted down the back straight there. Um, but Charles, electric off gate three. Gate three really is working. Uh, Magic's definitely got speed Magic's on Magic. He's definitely Scott. looking. He's looking inside. He's, he's really starting to put here. He's gone. Can he keep that run around the outside of Will Scott straighten up? Scott straightens up and closes the door, but Magic is definitely looking. We've probably got a big, big lap on our hands here. Charles Wright, he's out front. Keep an eye on Magic in second place. He's putting Scott Nichols under all manner of pressure. Will he get the run this time? Looking, looking now. And Scott's in Scott, you know, he knows this track so, so well. Magic's going to have to do something big on the last two turns. Will it cut back and run at the inside? Has he got the legs? This is going to be tight. I think, tight. He's, I think he's got him. Done him. That's a fantastic cutback from Magic Janowski, race of the night. Scott probably thought he had that one in the bag, but like you said, Rory, that line is developing, it's getting drier, and they're able to now push that little bit more. That great was, heat. That was a game of chess, that was. That was a great heat. Um, Magic was pushing for Magic all four Magic kept laps. sniffing coming off that corner. Uh, I thought it was he was going to get him off turn two, and Scott just went in a little bit deeper, got off that line, got into that wet stuff, and Magic just got it. If you can just see it there, there's still a bit of track that's still unused, and uh, he's used it to his advantage. Didn't he ever? What a fantastic heat that was. We can see it again, we can see the start. It was an even break, all four. Magic did not get away at all. No, he didn't uh, at and all, gate did he? one's been brilliant, but yeah, gate three is coming on. Um, and uh, Charles looked look fantastic. You know, for a guy that's hardly got on the bike recently, uh, coming back from a huge, huge injury, this is only going to build his confidence. And it's good. It's a track he's opened, he said he likes, and one of the reasons that he came here for that. but. But like you say, it was then a game of chess between Scott and, and Magic. Scott gave him a couple of little opportunities to have a little nibble. Scott was just, he couldn't find, you know, he was lifting, he was, he was changing lines every lap, so he was riding defensive. So, you know, he couldn't, he was obviously there. That's where I thought Magic could have had it. Yeah. Uh, again, Scott lifted a little bit there. Because that run has worked, doesn't it, down the back straight? Yeah. If you just see here, Magic keeps him really tight, gets has a sniff up the inside, makes Scott think, get back down low, and then... Magic's drifted in wide there. It's Coming it's down the back straight. I think here Scott just runs in a little bit deeper. There. Just yeah, that. There, it. Just it, yeah. and, it, and it threw him off that line. And that was the widest Scott had been in that race. And that's Fantastic all that was. Fantastic cut back. Race of the night. And as you said, it's getting better. The race is getting, which yep. you predicted early on. Fantastic heat. 
That was a win for Charles Wright. He was out front and didn't know what was going on behind him. Second place, Magic Janowski. Great performance from him. I love, I love nights like that if you get five of them. You don't know what's going on behind you. Yeah, no, you're just home and dry. Scotty Nichols, that was one point. And Zach Cook was at the back. 25-11, the progressive score. Let's line up for heat number seven. Off the inside in white will be Victor Lampard. Next to him in red, on track for the first time because of his exclusion in his first out and his Rowan Tungate. Surprise, no change. There you go. Surprise, no change. I just think with the gates one and three, I thought, yeah, use the yeah, advantage. that's right. Stevie Worrell, he'll go in yellow off of gate number three. Um, and Louis Kerr, he finds himself out for the third time this evening after a cracking substitute ride early on for Rowan. He'll find himself off of gate four. 25-11, the progressive scores. Oxford just starting to take control of this meeting now. This is where Birmingham have got to try and dig something out. But when you've got the likes of Rowan, Louis Kerr on form coming to tapes. Well, that's having a nice now. Almost feel slightly beaten before you get there, but let's see what the boys can produce. Looking at the start, gate three looks drier, and I think that is an advantage, especially on a night like this. It obviously then creates more heat in yeah. the back tyre, so you get more grip. So this will be interesting for Stevie. Here we go, the boys are ready. Green light is on, as you can see. Tapes go up. Good one from the inside from Victor Lampard. Great gate. Can Rowan hold that inside line? Just close out. Stevie Warrell, or will Steve get the run? No, Rowan held it. Nice line from Rowan. Victor Lampard out front. Rowan Tung getting second. Just keep an eye on Louis Kerr at the back. He's going to try and do what Magic did in the last heat. Put Stevie Warrell under pressure, but it's just settled down a tiny bit. Lampard made a fantastic start. Great game. Rowan's definitely got some speed, and I just thought for a second there Stevie was going to come up the inside of him. But yeah, you can see the boys moving out a little bit more. Rowan having a right, right twist of that throttle. Um, but Lampard looks settled, looks yeah, smooth. Yeah, looks good, looks fast, and, and this could be a great heat advantage for the Brum. It's very much needed with the scores drifting away from them a little bit. Great start from Victor. He's got hold of the heat. He's out front. Rowan's not really making any impact. If there's any battle, it's going to be in the back. Steve looks pretty comfortable in third. Louis trying some different things. Will he be able to produce anything on that last bench, uh, Rory? I don't think so. I think they're pretty settled now, but uh, who am I to say to make a change? They've got a heat advantage. There you go. Win for Victor Lampard. Great heat win for him. Nice confidence booster for him. Second place was Rowan Tungate. Third was Steve Worrell and Louis Kerr battling away at the back. Uh, a nice heat advantage for the Brummies. They'll be very, very happy with that. Uh, and again, for someone like Victor Lampard, awesome. He'll feel good after that. Four laps in front in conditions like this will always help. I think that will settle down Rowan as well. Um, you know, it's always it's obviously terrible, you know, not to get four laps in your first one. What's going to stay here? Lampard Boyx just goes forward. Stevie did not move. I thought he was going to, like, gate three has worked in the last three races. So Victor uh, had to turn pretty hard there. Cause yeah, he, he just didn't want to, like, as I said before the show, to drift up too yeah. high. That turns two is deceiving, and you just drop off the camber, and you can lose a lot of momentum. Yeah, so there we go. 4-2 for the Birmingham Brummers. They needed that with the way the meeting was going. Uh, Victor Lampard, great win for him, three points. Rowan Tungate, two in second place for Oxford. Third place, Steve Worrell and Louis Kerr at the back. So a 4-2 heat advantage makes the progressive score 27 to the Oxford Spires and 15 to the Birmingham just look, Just look at that camera view there where it starts, three and four. Nothing there, and then you look at Dale, one and two, there's plenty of material there. But a lot of water still sitting there on gate one, so it'd be interesting to see when they start using that section closest to the kerb. Uh, I don't know if anyone will be brave enough to do that. Maybe later on. You can see, you, you can just see that line there. What will, what will Bomber be saying here? Because this is, you know. Look how clean I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got to make that gate. <laughs> to be fair, he has made the gate a couple of times, Ashton. Yeah. And like you said, he, he's a trapper. Yep. He certainly is a trapper. Um, so, yeah, we're not, we're not going to track Ray just yet. We're going to move straight into heat number eight. The boys are coming around to tapes. A minute and 45 to get themselves around and get themselves set. Charles coming off gate four now. Yeah, we're going to see Charles again. Unbeaten so far, Charles Wright. He's had two five ones with Magic Janowski in his first two heats. That's the way to start your season. He'll be joined by Aston Bojan, who's picked up a couple of solid third places in his first two heats. He'll be really, really pleased with that. Um, getting a bit of a pep talk there from Bomber. Nothing better than that for a young rider to have somebody of that experience in the pits with you. I've had a few of them over the years. <laughs> Absolutely. Tommy Brennan, he's going to go off of gate three. And are we seeing uh, Leon, or have they made a change? I, I think, think Leon is still in. I think Leon is still in, yeah. He's had two last places so far. Yeah. He's going to find himself off gate one. Let's see what he can do with that. Ashton Bojan, two points for him so far. He's going to be off gate two in the blue helmet colour. Uh, Leon Flint, uh, sorry, Tommy Brennan, one point for him so far. He's going to be off white off gate three. 
uh, and the unbeaten Charles Wright, he will go off of the outside. The, the this is though. the great thing about having Curry at, at, at reserve. Ashton can go, you know, can almost guarantee he's going to be at home yeah. in heat, you know, in the, the easier races, right. yeah, protected. And, um, and that's important for a young rider, eh? 100%. Massive, I, yeah. I, I, I'm so on board with the, how they, in Poland, they look after the, the, the under 21 riders, they stay at reserve for the whole year, yeah. and they develop. You know, they're not rushed. You know, they don't get thrown into the main body of the team. And, uh, you know, again, it's uh, it's great to see. It's great to see. We've been straight in. Heat number eight, here we go. No hanging around tonight. Green light is off. Takes go up. Another even break, but a pull away from the inside from Leon Flynn. That's going to be a tight first turn. What a line from Ashton Bojan. Where did he find that? Both the Brummies lift as they go down the back straight. Oh. It's a bit wild going into three and four. Charles oh, has man. come steaming up the inside. Massive what a move. Oh. And Leon's put it back on him Either on the side. Oh. Oh. oh! You can see that building up. Down goes Charles right there. He just locked up as he went into that. That was a really full on Very lap awkward. and a half. Very awkward. A few, few, right, a few place changes chucked in there. Incredible first turn from Ashton Bojan to come back up the inside. Um, Everyone was fighting for that, that one line. And uh, that... That was a hectic first lap. I uh, just hope uh, Charles ain't done it. it that, look, that looks like a collarbone, collarbone kind yeah. of fall, that does. That over um, the top when you, when you, when you lock up yeah. and get thrown and, over. And literally knock the wind out of you. Yeah, so, yeah we fingers crossed uh, that he's OK. Um, and that that is another thing. They were all starting to get a little bit more keen. They all went in there a little bit hotter right. than that everyone had been entering the, uh, all night. Um, and that was literally down because the track started to open up a bit more. And they all went in, and there weren't enough room. And obviously, then when it spread it out, Charles went up over the top of where all yeah. that slurry is, and there was just nothing there to hold him up. And that, it's, it's just unfortunate. That seems to be the problem spot. Two or three of the boys yeah, have got it, a little bit of trouble there. It's so, like, the inside is grippier than the outside. Even though there's more material on the outside, it's too wet to use. And the, the wheel just doesn't grip it. He's up. And I'm, no doubt he's going to feel that in the morning. He's up and walking. That's, that is great news. Brilliant to see. You can see in his face there. He made us such a good light. Uh, the two Birmingham boys got it all wrong. It was a hectic, yeah, hectic you see lap. That, yeah. yeah, if you see that. Yeah, just both, both of them lift, lift really bad. And Tom here, oh, he straightens up, gets it all wrong. Leon reads it. His foot's off. But Charles, smart, smooth. But then Leon's got his wheels in line and thinks, I'm having you. And then Tom, Tom just thinks, I'm going around you. He comes back, yeah. And there, look. Oh, there's just no room. No Someone's going to give. No room. And That's it's not. I angle. think on a normal night, they all stay on. I really do think on a normal night, they all stay on. Oh, it digs in when it hits the exhaust. Or, yeah. The yeah, shoulder. You can immediately he's, see there. That's yeah. the that's the feeling. Thankfully, he's got up and walked away. We'll have to wait and see how he is. But I, I you think can see they're all pushing more. Now they are. Yeah, they're they're, well, the track's opened up. It's opened up. Everyone's feeling a bit more relaxed, a bit more confident. And uh, yeah, it's good to see. Obviously, not good to see a, a crash, but I mean, a bit more racy, a bit uh, more racy absolutely. like. Absolutely, they're starting to push it. But now. I think what you could see there, the Birmingham boys have made some very aggressive changes because both of them were lifting off the corner. Yeah, so, as they came off of yeah, two, yeah, yeah, both. And Tom, Tom went really narrow, and it reminded me a little bit of the incident I had here yeah, when Bomber here. and yeah, and, and, and uh, Jordan yeah. both straightened up and, and clipped me. So um, I think Tom had gone that narrow had ridden on a bit of track that hadn't been used and it pushed him way past the corner. Because there was no contact there, but all of a no. sudden Charles has, has yeah. got nowhere that, to... No one had, I don't think any, anyone had gone in that hard, like with, with three three abreast. Um, yes, they've made the track here wider, but you know, when the conditions are like this, they're just searching for that, that, that sweet spot in the track and uh, unfortunately Charles come off uh, second, third best. He did in that in that scenario, but thankfully he's up and he's. We he will be excluded from the rerun as the cause of the stoppage. But what up. a first corner by Ashton! Oh, didn't he cut back and come up the inside of everyone? Reminds me of an Andy Smith in his prime. Andy Smith, oh, the king of the cutback. There we're talking. Yeah. You, and, did, and again, you, did, did you hear the rumour that he, he only ca carried enough fuel around, you know, just for the first two races in the Grand Prix? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, good old Andy. And didn't he ride in the Grand Prix for a long time, Andy Mate, Smith? We're and off on a tangent here, and, but and the thing with he always earned his spot. Yeah. Always exactly. earned his spot. Every year he'd yeah. qualify off yeah. his own back. Yeah, that's right. And um, you know, and people forget how long he spent in Poland racing there as well. Yeah, that's right. He's one um, of the first kind of Brits with Joey Screen to go over there, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah, and be successful. And be successful. Yeah. Okay, as we can see, the boys are coming back up to take for the rerun uh, of heat number eight with the exclusion of Charles Rye, who came down. Thankfully, got up and walked away um, to cause the stoppage. So, Leon Flint back off the outside in yellow. He made a good, good gate first time out, Leon. Um, Ashton Bowdry made an incredible will cut back off a two. Will the gap be there this time? That's right, we'll have to wait and see. But with Ashton producing what he produced in that last one, who knows? Tom Brennan, he finds himself off of gate three with a bit more room, with nobody off the outside. Let's see how this race develops. A bit more pressure on Ashton Bojan now to see what he can do from the tapes. He's the only Oxford Spire in heat number eight. Tapes go up. Good start again from Leon off the inside. And it looks like Tom off the outside as well. If Tom can ride that first turn, get that run down the back straight. That's a good first turn from the Brummies. Ashton's got no answer to them as they ride a really nice first two turns. Work to be done by Ashton Bojan, but the Brummies are looking good. That's a shame for Ashton, really. He's done all the hard work in the first staging. Um, but uh, Birmingham uh, got two bites of the cherry here and uh, are on a comfortable 5-1. So yeah. I don't see it changing here unless Leon or Tom make a mistake. So, uh, you know, gates one and three working again. Yeah, they're and, looking, looking uh, comfortable. Yes. Yeah, looking comfortable, riding nice lines. Tom will have a little look. You'll see that he's under no pressure. Leon, two, two blobs before this one. So this will be a great, great three points for him. Um, the Brum is in complete control. And to be honest, Rasta Bojan, this is going to be his third point of the evening as, as, a, as, a, as a rising you'll, star. Yeah. You'll, you'll learn from this. You'll 100% learn Absolutely. from this. Um, you know, I think he might make a change. He's, he's getting sort of left behind there a little bit now. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a shame, really. He made the right call in the first one. But uh, his loss is Birmingham's game. It certainly is. Like you say, he'd done the work in the first running of that heat. Unfortunately, he couldn't replicate it. But for the second heat in a row, a heat advantage to the Brummies. And they're going to start eating their way back into this scoreline. 28-20 now. Pretty textbook for Birmingham. Pretty textbook. Yeah, absolutely. And, I think and, and, and Leon really needed a win there. He'd, he's been eating dirt all night. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Tom as well. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. A, a, a good, um, good return for Tom. So slowly in the way back into it. Yeah, it was tough. They, they, they all met again. It was an even break, but Leon got that drive up the inside. To and the he, first did, he didn't drift off the line this time. He made sure of it. Yeah, and, and Tom. Uh, that Tom just rode the cushion yeah. right round. You know, kept out of the roost. It was a smart ride, and uh, you know, and tucked in for that paid win. And that's a good, good return for the Brummies. They'll be really, really pleased with that. Sam and Malenko. Still no track grade. Still no track grade there. Like going. Great I, know. <laughs> I know. Big five-one for the Brummies, as we can see there. Leon Flint with the win. Tom Brennan in second. Ashton Bojan, the sole representative for the Spires in that one. He picked up that third place. And Charles Wright hopefully is OK after that spill in the first running of the heat. Um, but big 5-1 makes the progressive scores 28 to 20. And uh, yeah, they'll take this at that stage. I think they'll be happy with that. Two good heats and just swing it back yeah, in their favour a tiny bit. Keeping themselves in, in the hunt. Uh, and uh, bonus points always to think of as well. Absolutely. Yeah, great, great performance there from the Brummies. There we go, 28-20. I don't know what the 09 is on the end. Oh, that's the heat, of course it is. That's the next heat that we're moving into. That was when I was back at my prime. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, I'm trying to fill my program out. I can't go to speed without filling a program. And it's very difficult because I'm a man and my task is not the best thing that I'm good at. So well, when I'm watching, I like to have a program, but I don't fill it in. Oh, there you go. I'm used, to, I'm, I'm used to traveling around with Roscoe, so I've, I've got to fill the program in. <laughs> I, I, as a rider, Always look at riders. They're always reading the program, you, I, and I don't get it. I don't understand why. Even okay. I, I read the program. I don't get it. We always, re even the, when you go to the away track, we always read it. Really, a big, big, big heat number nine coming up. Probably more than the fans. Yeah, probably. <laughs> They're better at filling it in than all of us, I think. The fans. Scotty Nichols. He's going to go off the inside in white. Next to him. Oh. How many battles have these guys had down the years? Chris Harris, he's going to be in blue for the Oxford Spires. Zach Cook, Mick Bag so far for Zach, winning the first one, last in the second one. He'll be off gate three in yellow and black, in yellow. And off the outside is Nikolai Clint. Um, he picked up some good points in that second running, um, second heat of his. I've raced with them, I've raced against, against them, them, and I've watched them race against each other. And, and they're it's, fantastic. It's always brilliant. Oh, it's always and, they, brilliant. and they ride hard, but they ride fair. Yeah, and, and absolutely. I, it's always an enjoyment to watch these two race against each other. Yeah. And again, you don't want to ever see them stop, you know, as a, as a fan of theirs watching them. All my life I've seen these boys. I remember Bomber coming through at Exeter and Trelawney when he was a kid. And Apparently we've all signed contracts for Coventry when they reopen. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see that. Right, heat number nine, 28-20. Can the Brummies continue this bit of resurgence? Scott Nickers off the inside. Bomber off gate two. Zach Cook off of three. That's a great what gate a from Bomber and Zach as well. Zach's joined him. Can Zach get a bit of a cutback inside line? Will Scott have a look? 
Scott lifts a little bit as he goes down the back straight. Here comes Bomber. Here comes Bomber. He's got work to do. He's going to find that run around the outside. Is he going to pick it off the first time? No, he's not. Zach's keeping a bit of speed. Work to do for Bomber. I think Bomber's going to do, generate a bit of speed. Maybe not. The inside's starting to come back. Is Scotty having a look? He may do. Yeah, he here then. comes Bomber sending it in hard now. Here he comes. He's got a big run. Has he going to easy? Can he continue Just to speed? Can't get it off the court now. Nah, Zach's getting a nice run off the inside, coming off a four. But Bomber, he's on that line now. He's out in that dirt. Big long straight here. Scott has a little bit of a look. Tell you what, Zach is fast on the inside. Re now Bomber's going to have a sniff. He got him. He may line him up here. Got him. Can Zach him. hold it? I think he's got him. He's going to move him over. Scotty's out front. Will Bomber get that run at the inside or is Zach going to hold him? Oh, Zach, fair play. This all bunching up as we come into the last two turns. Scott is out front. Bomber's going to hold on to the second place. Excellent effort from Zach Cook in third. Nikolai, spectator at the back. Brilliant heat. Fair play to Zach. He was really giving uh, Bomber a tough time there for that second spot. That is a proper racer. Brilliant speed there. rate. Bomber Brilliant tried speed and rate. tried the outside. Literally exhausted the outside. Realised it wasn't working. Chopped back down the inside. And more or less made the gap. Yeah, he um, did. Because I didn't think it was there. No, and, and to be fair, Zach gave him just enough. Could have been a little bit naughty. Could have turned left say, on him. Hard. Yeah, that's what but I was going to say. Early on in the season, but... It Bomber just worked it out. See the start again. The Brummies made a great yeah, game, fantastic. both of them. Yeah, one and three again. Scott has a little bit of a lift as he goes down the back straight here, Whoop, like the Birmingham yeah. Brummies did in the last heat. But he's out front. He's comfortable, just Scott. The battle's always going to be second. The run is good into the corner on the outside. Just off it, it seems more, it's wetter coming off the corner than it is going in. Uh, but Zach was so quick at times where maybe, maybe, yeah, just... But you're right, he was riding yeah. such a nice inside line and, yeah. and, and Chris and tried the outside yeah. twice, didn't he? Yep. But couldn't get Zach to seem to have that run coming off of four. So Bomber's like, right, I've got to do something different. Yeah. And he created a but gap like, that look I how didn't much think was there. Speed there. Look how like far back ground he was far, so far. And then yeah. there, Zach kept having to chop off and th that was it there. Bomber, there's there, right narrow to the inside. Still not in front, still not now. So, yes, could Zach have been a little bit harder? Possibly, A little bit harder. I would, have, I would have thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I think a more experienced rider possibly might yeah. have done, but yep. you, you yeah. don't feel intimidated, but you know, you know you've know, you got yep. that man underneath yep. you. And he did brilliant to hold on and, and make a fantastic race of it. Another yep. heat advantage for the Brummies. And, but Bomber just puts a dent in, in, in that 5-1. But they turn around, but if you notice, Birmingham getting them, them one and threes. That's right. That's and they're starting third, to hit back. Third heat there with an advantage, and it was a great win for Scott Nichols. But I think who's got one and threes at the end? That's Oxford. exactly what you were saying yeah. earlier on. Scott, he bagged that second place. Uh, third was Zach Cook, and uh, Nicolai was at the back. We've moved straight on again. We're not grading. We're moving on. Heat number 10. Uh, we're going to see Steve Worrell. He's going to come off of uh, gate number one in the yellow and black helmet colour for the Birmingham Brummies. Uh, off gate two will be Charles Wright, thankfully back up and on bike after that spill in his last outing. That's good to see. Uh, Victor Lampard, he will go off of gate number three in the white helmet colour after a superb last Great outing win. for Fantastic him. Fantastic win, yeah. Um, but he finds himself on the inside of his Polish compatriot, Magic Janowski, who has been on fine form so far this evening and is unbeaten by an opponent. They've narrowed the gap back down to six, and uh, like we were saying earlier, Sam will be really pleased with that. For sure. Um, this is an interesting heat because the two poles are on the outside, and with two very, very capable starters on the inside. Uh, it could be interesting to see where these poles end up. That's if they don't get across early, I know where, well, if Stevie has been watching the races, I'd be right around the curb. Yeah. Literally hug that, hug that inside, give Lampart as much opportunity to come around the outside as possible. Let's see how it pans out. We're at tape for a heat number 10. There's a six point gap. Spires are up on the Brummies. Tapes go up, away they go, and it's a fantastic start from the inside from Steve Worrell. And Magic Janowski off the outside as well, he made a good trap. Steve, that's a wonderful line. He's giving himself that breathing space early on in that heat. That's a superb first turn. Magic Janowski finds himself comfortable in second at the moment. Uh, third, third place, Charles Wright and uh, Victor. He'll be looking to do something from the back. Yeah, he's having a sniff, Victor. Just It's, the, it's just not quite working. It's still too wet. Uh, he needs to start changing it up. But, yeah, Stevie, textbook from gate one. Kept it tight, but Magic's slowly clawing him back in. Yeah, for a couple of laps there, we almost had two battles going on, and Magic is having a look. Uh, Steve's going to have to ride very, very clever. And as we've just seen in the last heat, Chris Harris trying the inside, trying the outside, and in the end, he made himself a gap to get through. I'm not sure Magic's going to have that opportunity here against Steve. He's riding a very sensible line. He looks comfortable. He looks smooth. 
tracks drying out. He's out front. Set for a 3-3. I imagine the Spars will be happy with this after the last few heats. Yeah, it's a 3-3. Yeah. Steve Warren with the win. Second place, Mazanovsky. Third place is... Because I, 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 I think with, with the speed Lampard had, if he did get it in fresh air and Stevie hugged the inside, that could have been could easily have been a 5-1 yeah, to them as well. Story. Yeah, Charles Wright with the third place. And, uh, and Victor, he tried for a couple of laps, didn't he, there? Uh, to see what he could do, but couldn't make any inroads on that third place. So a 3-3 scoreline in that one with a good win for Steve Worrell. Yeah, we can see partway for the race. It was almost developing that, into was two... Was that Charles or was that Louis Kerr? Did they make a switch? I couldn't see I because know. of the dirt. We, we didn't get any notification up here. I think that was Louis Kerr, I think. Apologies. Yeah, it was. Know, it's hard, it's hard to it see now. The boys are coming Kerr. in shale and we haven't got that view. Yeah. We don't, we don't, yeah, apologies. We don't get the notifications yeah. up here. You're right, that is Louis Kerr. Though, Open the third. window and yell out. Yeah, here we go. Watch your shoes there, boys. <laughs> yeah, so a three, it was a 3 3 scoreline. It's still saying Charles right on our screen, but I think you did pick I, that I that think, was I think Louis it was Louis, yeah. Yeah, apologise yeah. about that. Great win for Steve Worrell. Uh, Matt Zanowski in second place there. Uh, Louis Kerr picking up the third. There should've, we go. Looked at There's Louis. Home. Apologies, Louis. Um, and yeah, Victor Lampard tried his hardest there at the back but couldn't make any inroads um, on that heat. And we end up with a 3 I'm three. guessing Charles is, is feeling very three second, hand. second hand. Yeah, yeah. there, yeah, is there it. he yeah. is. So that looks like he's well, positive. Well, his arm's not in a sling, so that's a, that's a good sign. That's positive, but potentially out for the, the rest of the year. Uh, so sorry we missed on that one. That's my bad. Ah, but when the boys get covered in shale, <laughs> covered in shale. Yeah. not like the old days where they had their own uh, their own race suit that you could pick. Um, so 33 to 27 is the ongoing score. The Spice still got that six-point gap, yeah. but Birmingham holding on. Stevie Wall will be pleased with that. He's having a good night so far, Steve. Victor Quality Lampard. start too. The bike just ripped off gate one in yeah. the last one. Yeah. Pulled away. Second place for Matt Zanowski, and then it was Louis Kerr with a third place. Uh, and we can see Louis with his interest in uh, headwear. They'll be pleased. This has been a, this is considering what we thought we might get tonight. I think we've had a couple of really good races. Yeah. And the boys are now we've really putting it in. Look, I think any anyone with a bit of common will, will, would realise that the track did have a little bit of water on top. But the best thing about it is Jamie got it hard packed. Yeah. And we've been able to have some racing, and, and you know, and. To, some good racing towards you know what we've had seen in the last three four races. So you see the confidence growing in yep. the, in the guys, yep. haven't you? Very much so. Yeah, very much so. Um, and at early, it's 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 hard for the Brummies. They have had no track time. Um, they Kier. they haven't been able to test anything really. Whereas, like you say, the Oxford boys were out yesterday. It looks like Curry's. Uh, oh no, it's Nikolai it's making a yeah. car. Yeah, probably probably a jetting change here for Nikolai. Um, that can be uh, difficult. Why, why, say, why be would he do that? Why would well, it can be very difficult on a night like this with moisture in the air um, and with the track the way it is, as greasy it is, uh, especially in parts. Um, you could be in a catch-22 because if you, you load it up with too much fuel uh, on a night like this with all the moisture in the air and it's cold, you think cold, oh, I need more fuel. Yeah. I need, I need yeah. more fuel. You know, it's going to produce more power. Uh, sometimes it's not necessarily how cold it is. It's the density in the air, like the moisture in the air. Um, and as you can see, yeah, he's, he's obviously training. I bet, I bet he's probably going a little bit bigger. I wouldn't think he'd go smaller, um, but you, there's that there's that fine line. You go too big, and with the moisture in the air, you can you can make the engine that dull. It doesn't accelerate. Yes, you detune it, but the bike does go forward. Yeah, okay. It, it's, a, it's a confusing uh, concept, but it can be like that. And uh, you know, and that's why riders sort of, they'll have a thing where they maybe not do the jet change and they do the ignition change. Okay. Leave, leave, leave a good, you know, like, not as much fuel, but less spark. Um, you know, gearing will be here, there. I don't think, you know, they'll be doing too much with the gearing because uh, it's a track that I don't think you can get away with running too small because you can overspin here, especially yeah, okay. with it being so slow. So it's the so changes so around yeah. the gearing that but can make the difference. I think if you've got a, a bike that just gets you off the start, as a rider, you make it go forward. Especially, yeah. on a, you see Scotty, it's, it's all body language at the minute because he's making the bike work. And you've seen the Birmingham boys, they're literally trying yeah, to make, make it work. Rear, yeah. um, and Bomber, you saw Bomber, as soon as he got the wheels in line, he was straight arms off the corner, you know, getting all the weight on the back wheel. Because uh, I think this, the, you can do too much. And, uh, but don't get me wrong, they will be making changes uh, to make it a little bit more aggressive off the start. 
obviously, because they're so wet and greasy. And you, you, everybody wants to win, but it is more important for Oxford to get off to an opening win at home. You don't want to lose your home first meeting, especially with the expectation and the build-up as a new team, three teams. You want to get the fans on side, and there's a, there's a decent crowd because of the weather. We can just see outside, and there's a there's a nice crowd all the way around. Start as you want to go on. You exactly, know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whereas Birmingham could go away with the defeat, but a moral one. You know, a yeah. moral if he's done well. The bonus point's still up for grabs. So yeah, you know, so you want to keep that I, close. Right now. Birmingham would be the happier for me. They would definitely be yeah. the happier. Yeah, when you consider um, at Heat 5, there was a 10-point gap. Yes. And we're sat now with a 6-point gap. And they didn't, so they didn't use a, a, didn't a, use a tier, no, TR. Didn't go so anywhere. No, um, they stuck with what they Thomas had. Thomas Pinker in the pits. Yeah, there's a there's a famous old yeah. face. Famous yeah. Kings Lynn for me was always yeah. Thomas, yeah. yeah. I've known him since I was 12 years old. A compatriot. Thomas. You're really fantastic. Yeah. I mechanic for him at uh, in the David Tapp uh, Speedway Master Series at oh, Mount really. Gambia. When I sort of met Crumpy, Adams, Greg Hancock for the first time. I'd be in awe, stood yeah. there. They all made fun of me. Did they really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really. It's amazing names you're, you're chucking out us there. They, for me, they were, they were some quality speedway racing days. They? Yeah. Um, maybe it's just because at that time I looked at them and I thought they were gods. Wow. Do you and know, then, in our sport, they are, aren't they? And then seven years later, I was you're toe -to -toe. Trying, to, trying to take bread yeah. off their dinner table. <laughs> That's right. And you did. <laughs> And you did, mate. Sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what, I, that's what I've really enjoyed about seeing a couple of these bigger names. The big names, names come oh. back. Exactly. Because it's, it's that's so what gets people engaged. Yep. I mean, I could watch any speedway, any level of racing. I love it. It's my sport. And you're probably very similar. And fans are the same. But when you do get those big names coming back in, it just gives you the impetus to mm. want to go and watch. And Anticipate. like The, the, exactly. the, the excitement exactly. of, oh, the, the big guys are coming ahead. Yeah. And we spoke about it earlier. The Heat 13s, the Heat yeah. 15s. Um, and we saw it last year with Doyle and Emil. You yeah. know, the task for everybody was to beat them in Heat 13. Oh, 15. I know. <laughs> exactly, yeah, you were there. You were there. You were on the right side of the fence. And if you did, you knew oh, you yeah. knew they were behind you. Yeah. Um, you know, like these guys are world class. And, uh, and that's what we want. We want world class. Um, you know, I know the Swedish league has sort of, sort of dwindled away a little bit, which is disappointing. But again, you know, their downside is our, our you know, goal you know yeah. good, you know a good thing to have like magic like all these big guys coming back and, and that's, uh, that's, that's right you know you, you look after your own don't you and that's what we want you know sweden and it only benefits our lads as well exactly. racing against world class and you just saw ashton bogen there talking with with masonovsky yeah. what an incredible guy to have next to you in the pits chatting away asking advice um you you, you, you can't beat that and it was interesting i listened to uh, an interview that that's that a good shot there you look at that rear tire there just caked in mud that charles yeah yeah, yeah. It, uh, it shows that there is there is dirt there it's just too wet so too look, wet to looking use. at that are we are we because we haven't got the nod do we think charles knight is over or i think you might, well that last race curry when i think that was his fourth ride uh, so yeah i think that would be yeah be done yeah heat 10 number night. two finishes it of course and, yeah. i keep thinking charles isn't at two yeah, yeah of course he is yeah that, yeah, again you think now. you expect him to be at three that's or something right like that. yeah i did yeah and that shows you the strength they've got yeah yeah, I didn't for one minute think we wouldn't see him again, but yeah, indeed you are right. So, we're having a bit of an interval, but we're not doing any track work at all. Nope. And I did see Jamie with the track creator walking around. So okay. they've had a look at it, and yeah. they've obviously thought, you know what, the track's riding good. It's 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 more than safe enough. You know, the lads are, are thrown about now, so and why from, touch it? From why your bother? experience as a rider, and as an experienced rider, do you do you have that convo with the track creator and the, the promoter? Obviously, the home riders would obviously yes. have, have the convo. See Nikolai's really shorten that bike up. Uh, yeah, but they definitely would. They would have spoken. Um, I'm sure Bomber and Jamie would have spoken. Uh, I think because the track has ridden as good as it has, they've just said leave it. Leave it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they could do anything with the starts. Um, the, again, the, the gates will come to them. So that's probably why they're not going to they're not going to touch it. Yeah, that's right. Um, the inside is working more than I thought. I did think the outside, but I just think it's just too wet. Um, yeah. Uh, so, look, still a few more races to go. It might come back, but signs so far, I don't think so. Just looking at the uh, just looking at the gate the gate wins so far. Gate three, gate one, gate one, gate three. Then we had a gate four, gate three, gate three, gate one. So one and one and one and three. I think I picked that. I think you did pick that, <laughs> my good man. <laughs> I'll give you that. You certainly did. And like you say, that's going to swim back in favour of Oxford. Yeah. Of Oxford, we come to the back end, yeah. So, 
We're going to go into Heat 11 next. We're going to see, if we go to programme, we'll see Rowan Tungay, Louis Kerr, Vaclav Minik, Tom Brennan. That's a one and three for the home side. Heat 12, one and three for the home side. Heat 14, one and three for the home side. Exactly. And that could be the telling factor. Here's Lawrence Rogers, been a part of the scene at Birmingham for quite a few years now, does loads behind the scenes. No Lawrence. doubt a very stressful couple of weeks that yeah. have just gone by. Yeah, for sure. So we're looking good. We are going to move nicely on in a moment to heat number 11, six point gap. Paul Hurry Paul there. Yeah. He goes everywhere with Scott, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's his main man now, obviously. Yeah. Up and down the country with him. Uh, I think Paul, is Paul still riding? Is he still doing a bit of grass? He's, he's, I think he was. He's yeah. just had uh, the, the, the metal work, I think. Yeah, he, I, yeah, I seen him on crutches there That's a few right, weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke to him earlier on. He said it's feeling good. He's getting he's getting back to strength. His triathlon days are over. Yeah. But yeah. And, and early Pearl Hurry, his style was fantastic. Yeah. Really good on a bike. Um, and again, he's another rider. I remember coming through when he was really young. See him in Hackney, Hackney, around uh, that era. You know, you go through, the, I don't know if it was the, the late 90s or the early 90s. You know, you remember... Louis, Harvey, uh, Marvin Cox. Yeah. Um, you know, th there was such a vast array of English riders that had come through. Yeah. And then it almost just stopped. You had Scotty and Lee Richardson, more yeah. or less. You know, yeah. that, that's, that was it, and it stopped. Bomber then came through. Um, it's great now. We've got, th you know, England got three Brits in the Grand Prix. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, it's almost like the good old days. You know, and then you threw Andy Smith in there. Yeah. You know, back, in, back in the old, you know. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, you know, with the youth program and, and more, you know, emphasise on youth. I, I think you can't fault it. Uh, you cannot fault, you know, putting no, back you can into see the that. the works going into it. Yeah, yeah most definitely. And, and again, I did a bit of work in, in with Birmingham there in the national league. And you could see it then. You yeah. could see like the Thompson Twin yeah. boys as young kids doing laps before the meeting. They've developed incredibly well, and they're now starting to make the grade, yep. um, which is which is brilliant to see. Uh, yeah, you, you've just seen on screen there the pants of the crowd. It's a, good, it's a strong crowd. It's a strong crowd considering the weather. Um, it is a really, really promising crowd, and Oxford will be proper supporters to come yeah. out cold. Yeah, a little bit damp. With a, with a, and again, it was raining heavy for a while. Yeah. It's a 50-50 yeah. whether it's going to be on. Yeah. Um, and I do know a few people that were going to come. And we're just like, you just, yeah. and I couldn't say. I've got at the a time. message on Twitter that says, "Oh, the, the the weather's awful; it won't be on." But I, I just, I just think, you know, Jamie's great at, at, at getting a meeting on. You know, if it needs to get on, he'll get it on. Yeah. And the, and the racing's been great. It's been it, good. Yeah, know, it's been good. Considering you know what it has, and if anything, the weather that we have had to get a track that rides as smooth and as consistent as this. Yeah. And 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 what what's interesting is uh, my friends uh, Charlie and Hannah. They were going to come tonight. They're coming from Gloucester Way, so they decided not to, but they've gone home and bought the stream. Yep. So that shows. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there we go. And that's what's good. That's what Oxford are doing. It's really good. I know many of the clubs are doing it now. Um, but it's good when you've got spirit supporters that are of that mindset yep. that I'm not going to go, but I still support it. They put a microwave dinner in, in, the, in the microwave. Exactly. They'll probably blame up. me for not being here because I said, oh, I might not be on. But there we go. I didn't say that. But there we go. So Vaclav Milik, he's going to yep. be back out in heat number 12. Um, a difficult night for him so yeah. far um, but like you I, think, I think probably a little bit of, a bit nervous you know a bit twitchy in heat one and there's an expectancy as well isn't there on yeah. someone like Vaclav to yeah. come over and hit the ground and running I'm, and I'm pretty points. sure would would have Pavlicky been the number one I think he possibly so was yeah, the number one the, yeah. obviously mindset would have thought he was num number three or five yeah then a week later you know a week before shifts around shifts yeah. around it can play on a rider's mind uh, if you're mentally sort of set so um this could be an interesting race, especially with Rowan and Vaklav. You know, they'll be looking to get in front. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think we've got Tom. Tom will be out in yellow. Um, is that and Curry? Is that Curry again? Yeah. Yeah. I've read it this time. I was going to say we need to call that now. We're looking even more closely than we were before. But again, once the boys get covered in, it's, it is difficult to call. It is difficult to call. Yeah. Brilliant. We're back out. Thanks for listening. We've got a minute and a half till tapes up on heat number 11. We're going to see Rowan Tungate go off the inside in red for the Oxford Spires. Backlap Millick, he'll be in the white helmet colour. He'll be off gate number two. Louis Kerr, blue helmet colour, gate number three. Six plus one for him so far. Decent night for Louis. And Tom Brennan, he'll be off the outside in the yellow helmet colour. There's a six point gap, 33 to 27 as we currently speak. Birmingham have chipped back away at a 10 point lead that Oxford had and it is now at six points we've got five big heats ahead of us like Rory was saying the gate 
might just swing in the favour of Oxford as we get into this back end of the meeting. Let's see how that develops. Heat number 11. Rider at tapes. Start Marshall. Walks away. Green line will be on. And away we go. Ref holds the tapes a little bit even break, but it looks like it's the Spires. Rowan Tungate off of one. Louis Kerr has joined him. Tom Brennan's having a look around the outside and a lovely run from Tom. Fantastic back straight third turn. Oh, Louis had a little bit of trouble there. He'll want to hold on to that third place. Rowan out front, clean pair of heels so far. Yeah, uh, Louis just again, as similar to Ashton, just didn't close the door hard enough. Um, Rowan off gate one, out like a bullet. Um, and Tom just obviously made sure he got into second. He settled. Oh, there was contact, but he's held on. Thankfully, Vaclav Milik there. That could have been a disaster. You almost said it, Rory. Rowan's out front. He's comfortable. He's, <laughs> he's got that lead. Second place, comfortable Tom Brennan. The, the race has calmed down now, thankfully. Louis in third. He did get a touch there from Vaclav. That was almost a huge moment. Thankfully, it didn't develop. The race calms down. It's going to be a 4-2 for the Spires. They get back hold of this meeting. But whoo, almost, almost. You felt that then, didn't you? You were riding that uh, then. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I thought two of them were going for a no. hot dog. If uh, you could have seen Rory then, he jumped about four foot in the air. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's at that point in the corner, if the, if the contact was made, you're just a passenger. Yeah. Uh, you've got no and you don't know it's coming. No control whatsoever. It's the most frightening thing you, you can experience. Um, Vaclav was generating some good speed. He was, oh, yeah. chasing back wheels, I tell you. That was a close. That, oh. that was a close one. Thankfully, that's they didn't. I mean, Louis there, he had a little bit, got a bit uncomfortable. That's, that's bus ticket material. Yeah. You're not getting that through, you know, the the rear cheeks. But again, oh. Rowan didn't know what was going on. He was out front. He yep. was clear of all of this. And and, and Tom settled into second. Um, pretty Louis comfortable. Was, I think he got a little bit, you know, probably complacent. Vaclav having a sniff here. He was close there, wasn't there. he? Oh, yeah. That could have been a different yeah. outcome. That was the best outcome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, that just settled. And uh, we got the 4-2 for the Oxford Spires in that one. Rowan was out front. Tom Brennan second. Louis Kerr, thankfully, stayed up right in third place. And thankfully, Backlab did come off. Uh, but unfortunately for him, he's out the back. So it's a 4-2 Oxford Spires. They grab a heat advantage. They get back hold of this meeting. 37-29. Not much to play with. Steph, definitely off four, nothing to play with. A lot of people going off one particular run there in gate three, as you can see. Yeah, you can see that. Then you move across here. A bit sloppy, a bit slurry in gate two. But let's have a look. There, yeah, there is definitely a rut there that they're all using there in gate one. And like I said, no one going close to the kerb. No. It's still too wet. Uh, and the ruts are a lot deeper in gate one. But notoriously, gate one is very good here. So uh, definitely the right call. Gates one and three. And... Uh, yeah, they're going to get a yeah, few more of them. They're one and three again here. If we're running to program, it will be Nikolai Clint and Ashton Bojan. It will be Victor Lampart and Zach Cook. And that does look the way as the riders come up to tapes. Off the inside in red will be Nikolai Clint. Five plus one for him so far. Zach Cook, he'll be off gate two in the yellow and yellow howling colour. He's four points so far. Ashton Bojan done his job at reserve. He's three points. He's off of gate three in blue. And Victor Lampart, a, a decent, decent meeting for Victor. Uh, on his debut in British Speedway. He's got five points. He will go off the gate four in the white helmet colour. Zach's ridden better than what he scored. Yes, I agreed. Think so. he's, yeah, been, he's, agreed. Been more, he's been more value than what he's actually scored. And regardless of the result, if it does go the Spires way, that is a confidence thing that you'll take and the Ox uh, the, uh, sorry, Birmingham will take out of this yep. meeting, that there are positives. Um, but it's still it's not over. No, no, it's a uh, it's back to a nine point, a nine point gap. 37-29, eight point gaps with 37-29. Let's see what... Uh, Nikolai hasn't been trapping as what we know he does. Yeah. So he misses it here, Zach gets over the top, Lampart comes if he can get on that. There, there is a cushion starting to build up on the outside. Um, big ready. call would be is if, if Zach could get over Nikolai. Yes. Let's see how this race uh, pans he's out. Just, he's develops. actually just changed ruts, Zach, right at the last second. Okay, let's see what Heat 12 brings us. Can the Brummies edge back into this deficit? Tapes go up, away we go. Zach off of two, Nikolai off of one. 
Victor, he's got a nice run. Will he be able to get around the outside? Zach. Nikolai drifts close to the door. Zach up the inside. Great first, second turn from Zach. Can Nikolai repay the favour? It looks like he's going to. Lovely three and four for him. Zach looks quick. He's he going does. to keep pushing. Victor now looking around the outside. He's going to try and get that run. He's using that line of grip. Zach's got it up. Can he close the door? If he shuts the door, he's got him. Oh. Nick oh. The inside. That's a big move. Fair play to Zach. He shut that door. No coming through there for Nikolai Clint, who's now got Victor on his back wheel, and he's going to push him. Yeah. Nikolai's in a tough spot here. Oh, Victor's just overcooked a little bit. He's got to get it back down. Can but he make fantastic a fantastic ride by Zach? Fantastic ride. Yeah, brilliant out front. Like you say, he's had a great night tonight. Victor as well. He's he's kind of chopping across the back wheel of Nikolai. He was going into that last turn where he's trying to get that wider line and get that run. Um, Ashton's not out of it at the back. He's oh. he's keeping Victor honest. That's he's for on sure. the pace. Yeah, most definitely. So as they come around for the last time, that's a great win for Zach Hook. Really good three points. Nikolai Clint second. Victor Lampard, a very close third. And like we were saying, Ashton not off the pace at the back. A heat advantage off two and four. There you go. So, And again, that's what yeah. the Brummies have kept throwing back. They've not chucked in the towel at any stage of this meeting. Very A strange one from Nikolai. The inside has been working and he, he was going in tight and then letting it run. Um, he'll kick himself. He will. If he watches it back, he'll absolutely kick himself. We see from Zach Tate. was patient, yeah. Yeah, he was. He, he, he absolutely there. was. Nikolai runs up. Zach nearly gets him here. Brave, brave corner from Nikolai here. Gets around his back wheel. And I thought he would have checked out. Um, Zach just ho holds it inside like just here. Look. It goes tight. And then carrying way too much speed into the corner. And uh, Beautiful Zach inside the, yeah. line. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Smooth, really yeah. well done. And I thought Whoa. there Nikolai was going to throw it back. And you've got to say fair play to Zach. Cause yeah, he's yeah. Him and, and Nikolai to, to, to hold it up yeah. as well. Going uh, in that's that good, with good that skill. pace. Yeah, most definitely. A terrific race. That's some good speedway tonight. So there's the confirmed 4-2 result in that one for the Birmingham Brummies over the Spires. Zach Cook out front with three points. He was your heat winner. Second place was Nikolai Klin. Third was Victor Lampart and Ashton Bojan. He was in last place there. So that was a 4-2 for the Brummies, heat number 12. Back to six points. Back to six points, 39 place, 33, and they'll be really, really happy with that, Birmingham. They aren't letting the Spires get away from them. Nope. And that's, uh, that bodes incredibly well um, for, the, uh, for the season for them. But like you say, we've still got three big heats and we're gonna see the big, gun, big guns come out now in heat 13. Heat 12. It's well, B13. Where I've lost where I'm at. Oh, yeah, we're 13. Yeah, we're racing away. That's where the two, the two minute clock is, uh, is throwing us all out. Yeah. <laughs> we are racing away. I was thinking I got my program all yeah, wrong then. No. I wasn't going to argue with you. No. <laughs> no it's it's because the one looks like a seven <laughs> on the back of Magic. I looked at that for a split second. I was like, hold on a minute. That's a seven. That's no, definitely a one. So, yeah, we're on to heat 13. Always a, always a big. That's hot what's thrown me. Is that Stevie? Stevie's coming in. It is. Stevie Worrell for Millick. Yeah, that's what threw me. Yeah, and again, just on the, we'll, we'll make that switch change there. That will be Steve Worrell off the inside in white. Uh, Matt Zanowski, he's going to go off gate two in the red helmet colour for Oxford. Off of gate three, Scotty Nichols. There we go. Nice change. Scott Nichols, he'll be in yellow off of gate number three. And Rowan Tungate, he'll be off of gate number four in the blue helmet colour. There's a six point gap, 39. Race is 33 as we go into the all important heat, 13. Yeah, and, and again, a sensible swap, bringing in Steve for Vakla. He's, he's had a tough he night. One, I think he won off gate one I last time as well. I think he did last well, time so yeah. I think he did. Reliable gator. Yeah. Um, so Magic's going to need all his, all his experience to get over and Steve. He did, and he, he, beat, he beat Magic in that heat as well. So let's see what this heat brings. Big heat 13, six point gap. Tapes go up, away they go. Who's made the trap? And it's Steve Warrell. Woo! What a start that is. Rowan, he made a decent one off the outside. He's looking for that long run down the back straight. Scotty Nichols moves over, doesn't give him any opportunity to make that run. Scott now switches to the inside. They're on a 5 1 in the minute, the Brummies. Yeah, Corey. Use that gate one and three to their advantage. Magic, have, yeah, he's having a go here. Yeah, still not enough food, but he's building some speed. He's got some speed at the end of the straight. I was going to say, you'll generate, generate a nice big long straight there. And will he be able to carry that speed? He's looking like he's going to have a really good go at Scott here in second place. Scott cannot rest here on any laurel whatsoever. His magic will push. And Rowan's not out of the picture either. A really close heat 13 here, but at the moment it's a 5-1 to the away team. And this is going to set up the last two heats. Massive 
unless Magic Enos yeah. can do anything in the last lap, Rory. No, they're, they're slotted in really well. Scott's very, very smart here, around the curve. He's got it covered, and even having a few looks over his shoulder to make sure, to see where Magic is. And uh, yeah, couldn't have got it any perfect for Birmingham there. Massive 5 1. Fair play to the Brummies. Steve Worrell, excellent play by Sam Ermelenko to make that switch and bring in Steve. Second place, Scotty Nichols. Third, a battling Matt Zanowski, but just couldn't land a blow. Two huge, points. Huge 5 Two 1. Two points. Huge 5 yeah. 1. And again, Rowan, he wasn't out of it at the back. No, they were no, all on they, the gas yeah, there. Yeah. Scott was just. Pin, like inch perfect did not get off the curb could see magic there every time coming especially off turn four he was always having a look um here we go because he did it. generate some speed magic he generated he did, a yeah. lot of speed but just not enough um it, you know goodness in, in in that dirt to you know get him around the track yeah you know, get him around a, the outside on a, on a different day and scott lifting his eyes he must have that thing set you up see, really you aggressive magic going in there yeah. yeah and again look how far behind he is yeah, but he makes such a long yeah. straight generates more speed and again on a different day that run would be perfection yeah, wouldn't yeah. it the strange thing is Stevie was actually running the wide line and was quite comfortable um, anyone else that's been trying to run it look at that yeah yeah huge heat fair play to Sam Malenko and the Brummies uh, big 5-1 in heat 13 uh, Stevie Warrell with the win Scott Nichols packing in in second Matt Zanowski tried everything in third but couldn't get up on Scott and Rowan Tungate he was in fourth spot. So, as we used to say in the olden days, happiness is 40-38, but not when you've got two heats to go. No. But it's a two-point gap. Birmingham have chipped away at this. There's us on screen, look, Rory. We're yep. having our moment on the screen, look. Perfect view from up here. Um, you can see how the tracks change from up here as well. Yeah. You can see the lines The, the now. dry line going yeah. into the corners. Yeah. Um, from Perfect here, it probably view. does look like there's plenty. And there is, I think there is a lot of material out there yeah it's just too wet and you can see that yeah. now when we yep. look into as you we, we look down onto the, the the first and second turn you can really see it building up yeah but like you say does it have that consistency to give you that grit to give you that drive to get that momentum yep. and that advantage not so much all Big right we're, we're perfectly poised we hope you're enjoying this at home this is our uh, been a fantastic speedway meeting we are 40 we are 38 to the oxford spires there's a two-point gap Stevie will get a bit extra time. Steve will get a, a bit more time, yep. Two on the spin. So, again, if we run to program, we're going to see Chrissy a Harris. Lot, there, look yeah. at the crowd. Good, a numbers, lot will, good uh, numbers in. A lot will rely on Stevie in the next one. Um, I think Curry off one, uh, Bomber off three. He'll, uh, yeah, the old sandwich, sandwich job into turn one. Yeah, but, and, uh, and Leon had a confidence boost in winning his yes. last one. Yeah, so exactly. yep. if he makes the trap, there you can see the you can see the grip. Yep. You know, there's there is material on the surface. Um, but it's been a good meeting. I'm, 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 I'm really impressed with the track. I'm really impressed with the work that the guys have yep. put in to, to give us an entertaining speedway meeting. And we've had no track prep as the night's gone on, which you don't often well, see. Oxford are the only one running tonight. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, just a bit of extra time here for Steve Worrell, who had two on the spin. He came into that last one as a as a reserve as a, a replacement switch for Vaclav Milik, who's had a tough night. Um, but Steve proving his worth there with another win off of one. Another good call. Another good by the call. Management. Absolutely, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. All set for two big heats to round out this meeting. There's going to be decisions to be made for heat 15, that's for sure, because there's a few candidates on both sides that could come out in that heat 15 but we've got a 14 to go first and if we run to program we are going to see that's Ashton no that's uh, Louis Kerr there sorry he's going to be in blue off of gate one he rolls in Steve there just coming out in the white helmet colour he gets a little bit more time so Louis will be pleased he'll be, he, he's, he's grown in, in the meeting Louis um, yeah and has scored well he'll, he'll, he'll definitely think he Gating hasn't quite been the, the Louis I know. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, similar to Stevie, like Stevie, how he's been jumping out. Yeah, he's been lucky to have gate one a couple of times, but you've got to make them count. Yeah. So, and that's what Louis has to do here. Um, bomber off three. Uh, it has worked. It has, it has worked. worked. Yeah, a yeah. lot of heats yeah. off of three, yeah. It has worked. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have Louis off, of, uh, Louis off of one in blue. Yep. Steve Worrell uh, off two in white. Chris Harris off of three in red. 
and Leon Flint off four in yellow. Leon can just go into this like a, a fresh, a fresh yeah. start because yeah. you know gate four is not great. We know that, and uh, he can he can choose either to cut back or try and build a bit of momentum. And he's got um, the ability to do that. Yep. And he's under no pressure because you know on paper this is a tough heat yep. for him. Yeah. And from gate four, though, you know, the lads on the inside probably aren't expecting him to get across. So no. let's see what happens. Here we go. Heat number 14, pulsating encounter so far. What is heat 14 going to bring us? It's going to bring us a great gate from Steve Warren off a two. And what can Leon produce? He's out in the grip. Bomber just moved him over a tiny bit. Leon will try and get a nice long straight. And will he get a run around Louis? That's going to be the move at the back. Out front, Steve Worrell. It's not over. Chrissy Harris here. He comes up the, the inside. Oh, he left the gap there. Up the inside, Steve. Oh! And Louis just had to lock up a little bit to avoid contact. But Bomber, he's got himself out front. Chris Harris out front. Stevie Worrell, he's in second place. Louis Kerr is in third. And a battling Leon Flint at the back at the moment. Bomber's got some straight line speed. He really does. Stevie will be kicking himself. I don't think he really did a lot wrong. Which is, well, he's actually starting to wind him back in now. Yeah, can he land that blow back? He's going to have to be clever at doing it because Bomber, like you say, he looks fast. He's on a nice line. Louis, uh, Steve's looking over his shoulder a little bit just to see where uh, Louis Kerr is in third. And he has got third sewn up. I can't see Leon landing a blow from there. So if it all stays calm around the last two turns, which it does, yep. it's a win for Chris Harris. It's second for Stevie Worrell. Third place was Louis Kerr and Leon Flint again battling away at the back but just couldn't make any inroads onto that third place and a 4-2 great start from Stevie off great two great start from Steve um, uh, well man so much straight line speed uh, hopefully we'll see that again but did Steve do anything wrong or did he just I leave don't, Bomber I don't just think so Bomber, Bro Bomber went in a little bit deeper a little bit wider got his mules in line um, I think Stevie was just running the same line he was in the previous race yeah uh, but I just think with, with, with someone like Bomber behind you you can't get complacent you you need in a way to almost think ahead of him um bombers obviously realized straight away he's, he's he did, he did third here trap. yeah that's right um oh, cut off. yeah <laughs> let's just guess just give you the uh, the result of that one it was a 4-2 to the spires that gives them that four point advantage again it was a win for chris harris a hard-earned win for chris harris out front steve warrell in second place he held the lead for a while. Louis Kerr in third. You think he'll need a big beg to get an heat 15? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's a couple of riders that can get into that heat 15. And Leon Flynn tried his hardest at the back there. But like we were saying, that's a tough heat for him. He wouldn't necessarily be expected to get anything out of it. Um, and unfortunately, on that occasion, he didn't. So we are looking at a 44-40 scoreline as we go into heat 15. It's been a great encounter. Birmingham have not let Oxford no. get away from them. No. Uh, I Does that know. tell us a story there? Is that all we need to know? Uh. <laughs> I think it possibly is. Yeah, I, yeah. I think Matt Zanowski and, and Bomber would be a, uh, the headliners for Oxford, I think. I think it would just be the argument, who's getting gate one? Which gate? That's no, right. Who's getting gate one? Not which gate. Who's getting gate yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have a look at Charles Wright's... Uh, I'm get, I, I'll, I'll go... I'll say Stevie off gate two, because I reckon... Oh, no... Uh, Point toss. Oh no, who gets the choice of gates? We, we don't really know who won the toss at ah. the beginning. That's the only information that. Oh, yes. So we, we've got a sneaky suspicion that Oxford, and, and the way that the meeting panned out with the one and three at the end, you would so think. So that means Birmingham gets so picked. Birmingham get the yeah. pick, and you know, that could be. That could be well, then Birmingham will definitely take one. Well, they would be silly not to take one and, one and three, but. Because again, when we just look at the back end of the meeting here, heat wins have come from gate three, gate one gate one gate one there has been a two in there as well that was Zach Cook he went off a two and gate one so one and three is the uh, is the is the way to go so yeah just just scanned uh, we just missed Phil Morris on screen oh, there we go there's Phil he's doing an incredible job Rory Phil Morris he's been put in a position where you know there's a lot of pressure on him looking to make changes um, and he's doing a great job we, we, we've known Phil from running, oh, I knew him from as a speedway rider, but a lot of younger fans will know him from being at the Grand Prix and being in charge. I raced against him. There you go. When he was at Newport. Yeah. Back in the old Newport days. But yeah, he's, he's definitely brought the, the, the professional outlook to the, to British Speedway. Uh, and, and so it should do, you know, and uh, we, we need more people like that. Yeah, and I think he's here tonight with uh, the guys from uh, Omologato, the, the international motorsport wash specialists who have 
put their back in behind British Speedway, which is absolutely brilliant. And we know that they're here tonight with Phil and yep. uh, a good crowd have come, which is fantastic to see. And they've seen a, an entertaining close Speedway meeting, which yep. you can't ask for more than that, really. And it's great to see companies like that getting involved in Speedway. We were talking about it before we went on air, Rory. Yes. You know, there is a product. There is a great product there. And when you're here and you're experiencing the smell, everything about it is, is engaging. Um, so to see businesses stepping in, the yep. more we get, the better it's going to be. Uh, more blue chip companies, more yep. recognised, you know, um, like the Grand Prix with Monster. All the, these are the companies we want involved here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, given the opportunity, I'm sure we would, we would produce a package that would be great. Um, but we also need to have that show, show aspect about it as well. And I think a lot, you know, a lot of, you know, people in the sport need to take a bit of responsibility on their own behalf of that. So, because I did a, when when I was working at Birmingham Swindon, I, I did a lot of work with the supporters. What do you want? What do you want to see? Because you get your 15 minutes of speedway, which we all love. But what do you want to see outside of that? And most of the time, they said speedway. They want to see more speedway. But that doesn't matter whether it's 250s, yeah. it's young kids coming through. And you were talking about that earlier yeah. on. Yeah, you know, it's it's a value for money. What are you getting? You know, like for 15 minutes of entertainment. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. and uh, it's that that's what needs to be looked at. Uh, you know, and the show aspect as well. You yeah. know, the sound, the, the atmosphere, what it looks like. Um, you know, I, I, I've said it quite a few times. You know, you look at the darts. Yeah, you, know, you look at the darts, and but you take away the lights, you take away the music. You've just got a couple of overweight men throwing a bit, of, throwing <laughs> knives at, at a wall. No offense to any dark No, players, no, no. But, <laughs> but do, do you but get the principle of what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. they make it. They yeah, make it's it a spectacle. Yeah, okay, it's I a know. Show. I know they've got a roof. But you know, we don't. You don't need, need a roof to, to, to generate that that show aspect. Um, you know, Oxford are doing it here with with lights and a DJ and the way they walked out. You know, that that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And and it shows what Oxford are doing because everyone's saying yeah. Oxford did this, Oxford are trying that, and that's brilliant. And like you say, the more that we can get that across the board, yeah. so that we are delivering that everywhere you go. Be interested to know what other t other team would even consider running three teams. Yeah, well, I, would, I would say zero. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think they've got the the impetus and the energy off the last couple yeah. of years, successful years that they've had, and it's a huge step. Three teams is a huge step. I was talking to a few supporters, Oxford supporters that I know really well, and they were like that. We we will go, you know, and we will. We want to see top top headline speed. That's what we want to see. But we will go and watch the cheers, yeah. and we will go and watch the charges. And but I don't, I don't see I don't see an issue with it. Like yeah, Manchester United have a. Uh, oh, I knew you'd bring they, them up they, at some point. So, sorry, I knew that was going to be dropped in. You know, the biggest club in the country. <laughs> that's right. But <laughs> you, you look at they have they have the senior team. Yeah, that's right. They have the youth team. Yeah, you got the and then they'll have they'll have a junior team. Yeah. Uh, so okay, you you're not seeing the same quality, but you're seeing football at all different grades, yeah. and I think that's what Oxford are trying to do. I completely agree, and and, and again with football. Like it, it's great to see a couple of female speedway riders coming in now, which is absolutely brilliant to see. And it's like you watch uh, women's football, and you know it's a different product to men's football, so don't expect it to be the same. And that's the same if you go and watch National League Speedway as opposed to exactly. Championship Premier exactly. Speedway. It's exactly Sometimes that. you can get some some great racing at National League level. Uh, you know, most definitely. Okay, we've, uh, we've managed to pick our way through what's going on in the pits there, and we can tell you if you are penciling out a program, oh, uh, yeah. it's going to be Matt Zionowski in red, um, Chris Harris is going to be on in blue, Steve Worrell is in white, and Scott Nichols is in yellow. So, uh, four riders we possibly anticipated, and as, and as you Ezra, suggested, one and yeah. three for Birmingham, and two and four for Oxford. So you're going to see Steve Worrell off of one, Scott off of three. Not surprising, Bomber took four. And magical for I two. Think he, I think he'll be going big. Yeah. Big early on. Uh, but no, knowing the way Bob has been gating to him, right, he could come off for like he an could. absolute bullet. Yeah, he absolutely could. He's got it in him, that's for sure. So we've got a huge 15, huge heat 15. I think, you know, the spectacle has been brilliant. The crowd will have enjoyed it. It's a close meeting. What, odd, what odds would you give me for a super heat? What odds would you give? Come on. Sure Birmingham have got gates one and three. It's on the cards. Let's wait and see. But it's going to be a big heat, whichever way it goes. Yeah. I think Chris Harris might have something to say about that. I don't think Oxford would have seen themselves going into a last heat decided. Completely tonight, that's agree. For sure. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think that's that's credit to the, the Brummies across the board because they've had uh, the likes of Vat Club that's had a difficult night. 
Oh, but they've all chipped in. Leon's got weather, race wins. I, I think weather conditions have, have I mean, levelled it out a little bit. But hey, it's the same for all 14 boys. There we go. And there's our confirmation of the lineup. And some big scorers coming into this one off of the inside in wide will be Steve Worrell. 10 plus one for him tonight. Matt Zionowski, red helmet colour, off of gate two for Oxford. He's eight plus one. Scotty Nichols, he's off gate three in the yellow helmet colour. And Chris Harris will be off the outside. So some bigger scores there. Chris has got 11, isn't he, so far, I think? Yeah. But scores aside, these four boys have been the ones batting away at the front. I think at one point or another, they've all made a pass this evening. They've all made a gate this evening. So anything can happen. What a great first stream we've had. Nice close meeting, some good, good speedway. Tasty Heat 15. Tasty Heat 15 ahead. He can find that bit of put. Here we go then, boys are at tapes. Green light is on, refs happy, riders are happy. Away we go. And it's Steve Worrell again, dream star off the inside. Scott looks like he's joined him. He's riding mid-track. Chris is going to look up the inside, lift him all the way down the back straight. That was a big turn three. Will Chris keep that on around the outside? Will he be able to get the better he's of Steve? Yes, he can. Now he sets sail after Scott out front. He's on that line, he's riding that dirt. Matt Zanowski at the back has just drifted away a little bit. It's all down to Bomber. Pretty much, Bomber should really tuck in now, just get them points. But Stevie's still there, he's still having a look. Stevie's still going to have a look, and anything can happen. It's got to be really difficult in that. As they go between one and two, there's been a couple of chasing back wheels. It was a little bit like that for Steve. Out front at the moment, though, Scott, he's happy. Chris is looking, oh, there's a big one a for Bomber. Can he keep hold of it? Yes, he can. And Magic now, he's starting to come back into the picture at the back. Yeah, I just thought there for a second, Bobman was, yeah, could have just, just just tucked it in. You've got it in the bag, but they're going to get it in. And Stevie's having a, having a sniff on the last corner. Is he going to lose it? Oh, oh, that's too close for me to call. Have we got transponders? That was right <laughs> on the line, eh? That was right on the line. A great win for Scott Nichols. We know that. That was a win for Scott. Chris was in second, we know that. But what happened after that, we are not too sure at the moment. Scott they did use skates one and three to their advantage. And uh, to be fair to Bomber, he never gives up. Absolutely no, never gives never. up. Um, he was still having a go there for a while. I thought, just tuck in. You've got the meat in the bag now. Yeah, it's it's a hard to slow Bomber down. Yeah. Honestly, he's just got such power in it. And like you say, there's a lot of body movement there where he's working as hard as he can possibly work. He almost got in trouble, didn't he, on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a couple of times. Yep. They both did. Steve did yep. as well. So we're just going to watch here the last couple of laps yeah. again. You can see Magic just coming into the picture. Yeah. Steve's got that line coming off the two. Literally just here, Bombers. Having a sniff and it pushed there. Picks it up. Oh. That's where Steve just gets an opportunity, but a bit yeah. too far. And that's where Magic again just comes into the picture a little bit. I thought, I thought Magic just there. He's miles behind. He's yeah, generated yeah. some speed out of absolutely nowhere. So, well, Stevie's so, gone so. straight off the line. That's why he's done exactly the same thing Bomber did the lap before. But has he got it? Has he got it? Has he? I think he's got it. Level out here. Oh, I think he's got it. Magic just. I'm going to give it to Magic. I'm going to give it to Magic. I think. Oh, yeah. well, there we go. The referee just popped his head in and said. Just magic got it. We've just had the ref in with <laughs> us. He's triple checking. So it was magic. So a 3-3. Great, fantastic final heat of the night. There we go. Confirmation. 3-3. Scott Nichols out front. Chris Harris second. Matt Zanowski, he came in in third in the end after Steve got into that little bit of trouble coming that's off of the final that's turn. That's a pay two, that is. So we end up with a 47-43 scoreline, which I would imagine both teams would be relatively happy with. But we almost had that super heat. A couple of times I thought it was going to swing and we were yep. going to get that. Oh, I tell you what, I, if I'm honest, I think Birmingham will be chuffed with that. Happy with that. I think yep, they will most be. most definitely. Uh, and going back there for the second leg for the bonus point, I think it's in their hands. Yeah. Uh, but then you still look at, on paper, Oxford still looks stronger. You know, that's that's just being honest. Um, but the way they the Birmingham attack tonight, the way they, they even on the, the gates, when they didn't have gate one and two, Stevie... Yep. Zach, they were making they were trapping, and, yeah, and, and quick. So um, good signs for Birmingham. Good really, signs. really good signs. There's your there's your confirmed uh, scoreline. It was 47 to the Oxford Spires, 43 for the Birmingham Brummies. 
Um, there you can see the little credit roll along the bottom there. Some good, some good guys working on this project here for you. Um, so if you can't get to the meetings, I don't think we're going to show every single one, but we are going to give you a really, really good uh, account of the season um, on our Oxford stream. Rory, I've enjoyed that, mate. Terrific. Yeah, first one in the books. First and one on uh, the books and a great meeting, really yeah. good meeting. Both sides giving it all. Um, and to be fair, we, it didn't even look like we were going to get one on no, at one stage. No, so that's absolutely To right. see some racing like that, I think, uh, you know, even if you're just a neutral, I think everyone's quite happy. Most definitely. Superb. We really, really think, hope you enjoyed that at home. It's been a good spectacle, a great opening meeting of the season. Um, um, if you can't get down to trackside, Oxford, every other club, BSN, have a look online, have a look at the streams, plenty of opportunity to watch some speedway, support it from the sofa if you aren't able to get down to track, but there is nothing better than the smell, the atmosphere. So keep a nice mix of the two from Rory and myself, everybody here at the Oxford stream. Thank you very much, and we will catch you soon. Good night. See ya.